councillors. Um, welcome to the Planning and Development Committee meeting for the Toowoomba Regional Council for September 2020. The meeting is open to the public and also will be live streamed. I would like to thank all of those of you who are in the room with us today and acknowledge everyone who is watching via Council's social media channels. I acknowledge my portfolio lead, Councillor Bill Carl, acknowledge the Mayor, Mayor Antonio, Councillors, CEO Brian Pigeon, General Manager Stuart Summers, all the staff here today, thank you for taking an interest in what we are doing here at Council. So we will open the meeting, I'd like to open the meeting by acknowledging the traditional owners, the Aboriginal parties whose song lines traverse these lands we meet on today, the Western Waka Waka, Gaibal and Jarrawa peoples, and pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging, for they hold the knowledge, rich traditions and bold ambitions of Australia's first peoples. So we don't have any apologies or leave of absence today. Um, so we move to item three, which is the proposed amendment number 24, interim local government infrastructure plan uh, to the Toowoomba Regional Planning Scheme. And Josie is going to talk to us today. Thank you. Good morning, councillors. Um, Good morning, Josie. We're presenting this report to amend our local government infrastructure plan. The purpose of the amendment is to identify waterways as existing trunk stormwater quantity infrastructure on our plans for trunk infrastructure maps. Why we're doing this is because we believe urban waterways are part of the stormwater quantity network and it allows us to plan adequately for a safe and sustainable stormwater network into the future. So the means by which we intend to make this amendment is an interim LGIP amendment. This process is um, a fairly quick and simple process because it doesn't involve the state review that we normally have or the minister's review and doesn't involve a third party review. What it will include is a period of public consultation and we intend to go out and speak with the community about this proposed amendment we also propose to undertake targeted stakeholder um, consultation with people, with relevant stakeholders. So this doesn't change any other part of the LGIP or any other part of our charging framework. It's just a change to the maps of, um, in the local government infrastructure plan. So if we could, could we call up the map on attachment two? And if we could go to map four. So just to demonstrate um, what we intend to do, we have East and West Creek as urban waterways running through um, the Toowoomba urban area. And what this does by including it on the map is provide a complete network instead of just a collection of individual assets. So what this doesn't do is um, indicate ownership by council of urban waterways. It's not a financial asset that we're usually used to when we speak about infrastructure and so there is no obligation on council for financial obligation or obligation on maintenance or operational considerations unless that is considered as part of the stormwater planning in our other network planning processes. So if council proposes to make the interim amendment, we will then develop a consultation plan. We will go out for a minimum of 15 days to public consultation, after which we will come back to council having addressed any feedback and council will make a decision whether to proceed with the proposed amendment. Today we're asking council to propose to um, make the interim amendment as we've um, presented it by putting urban waterways into our plans for trunk infrastructure maps. Thank you, Josie. Any questions, councillors? I think 
Councillor Von Hunt. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you, Josie. A question on page three or four of the report under legal issues. I wonder, given the emails that we received yesterday, if we've had legal opinion on the appropriateness or the suitability of undertaking this work while we're engaged in a legal dispute with the party about the stormwater <coughs> works. Um, thank you, Councillor, for that question. We've not had legal advice in particular on what the matter that you asked. The legal advice we received initially, um, given that this came up in the matter you're referring to, the legal matter, um, there was legal advice following on from that that we should address the inconsistency that came up mm. in that report that while we do identify um, urban waterways such as Westbrook Creek as trunk infrastructure in the words of our planning scheme, we had not shown them on the map. So that inconsistency made that court case a lot more complicated and difficult mm. um, than if we had have been consistent in the first place. Thank you. A sorry, a supplementary, if I might. I guess I'm asking actually more specifically, thank you for that, whether or not we've had advice about whether we should wait until that court dispute has been settled before doing this or if it's fine for us to undertake this work. A point of order, uh, Chair, uh, uh, the re legal advice that might be obtained is confidential uh, to the council and this is an open meeting. Let's get the CEO to comment there. Thank you. Um, the, the matter you referred to, that, that was determined by the courts yesterday, so that's, that's the conclusion of that okay. as far as I'm aware. Okay, thank you. I might just get the CEO, uh, the um, general manager to comment on um, the history of where this has led up to. It's not just come out of as a reactionary thing. No, I yeah. understand that. Uh, did you want a history or not? Oh, no, I, I understand that. It was just that one point, if yep. we had the green light for this now. Yeah, well, the, the uh, Court of Appeals brought down their decision yesterday. Timing is impeccable here. It's amazing. Um, we didn't plan it. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I was going to raise the point that was raised by Councillor Shine, that uh, any advice that we are given in regard to these matters, really, we should not be discussing publicly for obvious reasons. Um, and, but um, it, it was pointed out to us some time ago that a weakness in our mm. um, stormwater network was that we were missing part of that network as per our mapping. Mm. Um, and we're trying to fix that up. Councillors, if there's no further questions... Oh, Councillor McDonald and again Councillor Shine. Thanks. Um, thanks very much, Madam Chair. I just... Through you, if I could, through to Josie, perhaps. Um, just uh, the practicalities of this, Josie, and how it relates to, to people on the ground when, uh, when council doesn't own the infrastructure itself and it's owned by someone else. I know, obviously, through our planning approval process that, uh, that we have conditions uh, to have a no worsening effect on this sort of infrastructure, but how does, how does this work practically on the ground for, for someone who's who's in a, uh, or, or owns parcel of land that has this waterway going through it. Uh, how are they impacted on this, or are they at all impacted? Um, unless, if I can answer in two ways, the, the no net worsening um, conditions that we might put on a development won't change as part of this amendment. Um, this is relating to LGIP and trunk infrastructure that is related to a whole of catchment approach to infrastructure planning. The main consideration um, or effect of this is that it demonstrates that we have considered the impact of future development at a catchment scale on our urban waterways and it forms part of why we plan the future trunk infrastructure um, that we've planned of a regional nature, so regional detention basins, etc. Um, so the effect really is mostly on council and the way they undertake their planning in recognising urban waterways form part of the function of that trunk network. It will not change the conditioning that we're able to do at DA. 
Is there any question, Councillor McDonald? There. Thank you. Councillor Shine? No, th thank you, Chair. Um, just uh, uh, the rationale behind the ability to make infrastructure charges for existing natural waterways, uh, sort of, uh, I have queries about that in my own mind as to the justification for that because. It's, it's something that's pre-existing, hasn't cost the council anything to construct and or, to, or for that matter to maintain probably, yet it, there's a justification for water charges to be, infrastructure charges to be made as I understand it. Is that only in relation to that uh, worsening effect uh, part of it or is it, uh, what's, can you explain yeah. to a novice what, what the rationale of the ability to make those charges is? Um. The infrastructure charges are collected to pay for future trunk infrastructure works in the LGIP program. So any works within the waterways that might be rehabilitation or um, detention um, that, <coughs> sorry, or hardening of that channel into a formed channel are what those charges go towards paying. It's not paying for, it's not saying that council built the existing infrastructure because it was there naturally, it's natural infrastructure, but the capacity of our natural waterways to take increased flows from urban runoff is limited and at some point um, council will be required to do works in that waterway or in relation to that waterway. So that's what the collection of charges is for, not for the existing waterway to recoup any money. It's for any future works in that waterway as the capacity reaches a threshold where works need to occur. Just a supplementary. Uh, it, I think the, uh, your uh, brief uh, refers also to easements uh, for waterways. We're, we're an easement. It's not pertinent really to this lecture today, but pertinent to uh, a, a constituent's inquiry that was made of me recently, where apparently an easement is made in favour of the council uh, for a waterway purposes. Does that, in the normal course, depending on the wording of the easement document, I suppose, but in the normal course, does that uh, impose an obligation on council to maintain that easement waterway, uh, you know, uh, in terms of repairing scouring or, or clogging up of the the drains and that type of thing, do you know? Um, I can't talk to the matter of an easement. Um, in terms of showing natural waterways as part of our existing trunk network, there's no obligation on council for scour or erosion no. um, that is happening naturally as part of what happens in that waterway. <coughs> no, thank you. I, I might uh, attempt through you, Madam Chair. Um, to answer this one as well, when a development approval is given and if there is a natural water course running through that land, then often we, we can either take it as um, uh, an easement or we can take it in, um, in freehold and it becomes part of our asset base, our stormwater asset. But by not recognising the natural water course as being part of the, the storm water network, and I'm talking network here, um, it, it, it's obviously, if we don't include the natural streams and water courses, then only half our network is being recognised in terms of our long-term planning. And we are planning for our storm water like we are with other infrastructure uh, in de some detail, five, 10 and 15 years for the LGIP. It's no different, in fact, to uh, our transport networks. We have both our local transport networks and we have the state networks. And, but we recognise the entire network, which includes local and state, as part of our transport network. Um, we only collect um, uh, infrastructure charges for the trunk um, elements of the local transport network and that's the same with stormwater. We'll be collecting uh, infrastructure charges for the trunk elements of the water stormwater network. Mm -hmm. So, but we that that's the whole purpose of this amendment is to complete the network. 
Councillor McDonald. <coughs> Thanks, Madam Chair. I'm just wondering, with the, the motion or the recommendation that's there, is it just uh, simply as, uh, as through course of general procedure that this will come back to Council for adoption? We don't need to spell that out after just says the uh, proposed to make the amendment. Um, part of the it's part of the statutory process. We must go through that. Back, but I just wondered whether we needed to put that in there. But we don't need to. That's fine. No. Okay, uh, Councillor Mc uh, Antonio. Sorry. I just ask where the responsibility of state government comes in, and where our our responsibility diminishes, and where theirs takes over. Any interaction I've had, I've generally had it with, and it's non-urban, certainly DNR. So if you could just explain that, I'd be appreciate that. Um, <coughs> thank you, Councillor Antonio. Um, we will definitely be talking to DNMR about this as part of our stakeholder key stakeholder consultation. Um, their interests are particularly in the natural function of those waterways. And um, I guess if you like, our interest is in the overlay of um, expecting those waterways to function also in urban stormwater management. So um, we need to work closely with them to ensure that we're not overlapping on those interests. In particular, we're just um, concerned with increasing stormwater quantity as catchments get um, built out and there's more impervious area, you get an increase in the quantity of water entering into those waterways and that can have an impact on the natural functioning of those waterways. The concentration of flow, mm. change in the flow. Happy Mr Mayor. Yep. Councillor Carl. Uh, comment if I may, Madam Chair. Um, council, it's probably good to keep in mind that uh, we as a council in uh, initiating this amendment as per advice um, are not unique um, across the state. There will be uh, multiple councils looking to address this issue as part of completeness of a stormwater network. Um, so uh, I just probably keep that in mind. That's a good point you make. Thank you, Councillor Carl. So with that, can I have someone <coughs> move? Sorry, sorry, Councillor Summerfield. You. Um, if I could ask, is that actually occurring? Does no, does anyone know that? What's that? Sorry, to... is do you want to repeat the question, Councillor Summerfield? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just wondering, um, Councillor Carl, Carl just made a statement that other councils across Queensland are doing it. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, we're not the only ones that haven't recognised natural water courses as part of overtly on mapping um, the uh, natural water courses. Um, it's, it's, uh, it wasn't thought of as being necessary because there's such an uh, assumption that all stormwater generally ends up in our natural water courses in one way or another. And it was seen as being part of the network. Um, but uh, of course the law demands a, a much clearer picture um, of a lot of these sorts of things and often uh, we're, un we're led to understand initially. So what happened when it went to appeal, um, a judge looked at the law and s saw a network that was incomplete, being our stormwater network, because it did not show on our maps uh, natural water courses and other councils who went through the same PIP process and now LGIP as this council did, uh, are in the same boat. So there'll be a number of amendments to various LGIPs across the, the, uh, the state. Okay, now this time, there's no further questions. Um, so we have the recommendation there before you. I'll just read it out for those on online. That council proposed to make amendment number 24 to the Toowoomba Regional Planning Scheme um, in accordance with section 21 of the Planning Act 2016 and chapter five, part two of the Minister's Guidelines and Rules. Can I have someone move that recommendation? Councillor Carl, seconded by Councillor McMahon. All those in favour? Those against? Councillor Summerfield? Okay, with that's carried. Thank you, Josie. 
we move on to item number four, which is the formation of the Environment Advisory Committee. And am I getting you back, Josie? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> on a completely different matter, councillors. Um, this is a proposal um, that we're bringing to you to establish an environment advisory council. There has been strong interest from um, across council and the community for the establishment of an environment advisory council as um, an official means to engage with council on environmental matters. So um, the elements of this proposal are that Council, first of all, uh, establish the Environment Advisory Council and that we seek membership from the community to that Council um, through an expression of interest um, for community members to put in expressions of interest um, on a merit-based selection for membership to that Environment Advisory Council. And then the third element is that uh, councillors select a chair for the council and other um, council members, up to three council members, to be on the advisory committee. Thank you, Josie. We've had a fair bit of discussion around this. Is there any questions or comments, councillors? Councillor Summerfield. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just in relation to the um, terms of reference, I've got a couple of queries on page one of four in the functions section. Um, Dot point five is feedback to Council on policy and strategy aimed at improving climate resilience and responding to the challenge of climate change. We had quite a long discussion and agreed that in our green infrastructure we would remove reference to climate change in that. As a Council that was where we were heading and I'm wondering why we have included that and I, I would recommend that after climate resilience there be a full stop. And then on the second, the next dot point after that, um, could you explain why an advisory group would be advocating to the community on matters? Okay. So I don't believe that should be in there. Uh, I, I, I support that, Madam Chair. Well, from my recollection, if I may, just that um, this group is to take back to their groups. Um, any um, individual groups that they're in, um, the decisions that have been made at the advisory um, committee level. But advocating is a very um, powerful word. Um, going back and providing information is one thing, but advocating to the community, I don't believe is the appropriate role for this advisory committee. Okay. Did you have any comment there, JC? Or I know we've been over the terms of reference fairly extensively when we talked about them. Yeah, we did discuss um, extensively that the role of the members um, would also be to act as conduits, conduits to the um, rest of the community because there was, there'd be limited membership um, and we wanted to have a representative membership that we couldn't invite everybody. It would provide, we, we would expect that they would be going back to the community and Madam, Madam Chair, if I could just remind you and others that whilst there may have been discussions previously, this is actually the decision-making time. Mm. Okay. It's okay. only discussion Let's talk previously. about it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to, um, to get further advancement on the two things I've raised there. I'll get the General Manager to talk about that. So, and, and Chair, may I? I think in regard to the... Um, the, the second matter that's been raised by the um, council and Nancy, the, um, it probably wouldn't lose a lot if, if it read, advising council um, on matters relating to sustainability, such as energy. You, you could remove the word advocate to the community. Um, I think, um, I don't think it'll lose a lot, that one. It's really about advising council in relation to sustainability and energy and waste and water recycling. That's what it's about. So um, if other councillors were in agreement, we could probably strike those two words. Or oh, hang on, four words. Yes, well, I don't know how everyone else feels, but I, I would like that um, including advocating or championing to the community on matters relating to, um, maybe, to my mind. Yeah. Maybe championing. Championing? Mm. Okay. 
Thank you. Can I, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we had a lot of discussion over this on the information sessions, and I did ask for other advisory committees' terms of reference to be checked. Everyone that's on those advisory committees does um, represent something, an, a, a, an actual uh, voice for other groups, and it's not spelled out. I mean, the groups, it doesn't say advocate. Advocate is a quite a different thing. I do agree with Councillor Summerfield on both things, and I think that in the first, in the first instance, and I don't know what's happened here, uh, we should improve in climate resilience. That's all we can do improve climate resilience. This, this advisory committee should be very valuable to us to hear uh, their uh, thoughts and to help us in those areas, as all our other advisory committees are. But at the end of the day, we would be seeking out experts in their fields for certain things that we want to be having a look at. So it's not, I mean, I'm just a lay person that is sitting here as a councillor, but that doesn't mean that I have the areas of expertise because I'm passionate about something. And whilst we have people who are passionate and we welcome them and we want them and they bring other things to the table, if we're looking at experts, like on other advisory committees we get traffic experts and uh, cycling experts and walking experts and other things like that. So these, these, this, these advisory committees are meant to help to uh, bring community concerns and or expertise to us. And uh, I think that we've, what we've worded this, uh, and I did speak about it at the, um, at, at, the, at the information session, I don't believe advocating to the community on the matters, that's our job, that's not, um, and it's the state governments and the federal government's job, um, that they should be a conduit for members of the community and that should be captured somewhere there for them to bring their concerns through to this committee to discuss, not to be doubt advocating. And I do agree with that previous, it should finish at climate resilience. Madam Chair, point of order, we probably should be debating if people are, you know. Sorry, but you were right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, before we move into debate, I guess, Councillor Von Hoff, did you have a question or a comment? Thank you, Madam Chair. It was a suggestion then that that point that was, um, the second point that was raised by Councillor Summerfield, advising council and advocate to the community might, a way forward might be advising council and relay information to and from the community on matters relating. Yeah, I think... Um well, that sounds like a reasonable suggestion to me. If, if the other councillors are in favour of that, we could make that change, yeah. Um, Councillor Shine, did you...? Just to, if I could, just on that, um, I think it's not just those areas that they do that, though. No. Um, it probably just needs a broader statement like that, that they do it and, and leave those, those bits off at the bottom because they really do that for all, all areas, not, not just for those, you know. The point that Councillor Taylor made is a good one with all the variety of different things, but we don't say in those terms of reference advocate for walking. No, we don't. No, it's, 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 it's the whole discussion. Mm. So, um, so I'm open to the room to um, on the wording. It's, um... I think the wording was fine from Councillor Von Hoff and, and just that, that covers everything and just leave the, the specifics out at the end. Mm -hmm. But uh, do we need that there? I mean, they're terms of reference. They don't have to cover everything. And, uh, you know, th that is the role of an advisory committee, to be a conduit to and from the, the actual advisory committee that they sit on. It's an advisory committee. That's what it is. And you can't have everybody on it. And uh, the councillors are, are advocates there as well. So you feed stuff up through the councillors. But also, if you're in a group that somebody who's on there, then you might feed some, inf some questions or some um, suggestions up through that particular member of that committee. Mm -hmm. uh, any other people who haven't spoken like to speak? Um, give me some of their suggestions. Councillor O'Shea. Yeah, sure. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I... I'm neither here nor there with the words, to be honest. I think advo advocacy from our uh, groups of this is something we sort of expect anyway. But I think along the points that we made here, if we're talking about nips and tucks with the words, you could probably just do it with advising. Like the, the point could simply be, as Councillor McDonald said and, and uh, Councillor Taylor have raised, getting rid of the actual point saying relating to, it could just be advising council and community advocacy. Isn't that, isn't that what we want? 
these advisory groups to do is if, whether advocacy is the right word or not but as you said like that's how we sort of get it's that connection with community and council so I mean if you want to take it all the specifics of it it could just be advising council and community advocacy full stop well I am happy with that but there doesn't seem to be consensus around the room so Councillor Shine did I miss you out before I'll, no? I'll probably but I don't sorry my hand up but uh... <laughs> look at the mayor I'm always missing him out yeah. Well, I see, I think it's been said before, an advisory committee is an advisory committee. Uh, they give us the, the community's opinion on, on whatever subject we put to them, and then we make the decision. And that, that's simpler to me. I, I don't think the word advocacy is necessary in there, but it doesn't alter the function of the committee. I think you'd find that uh, they're there to give us the opinion of the community, and they do work well. Mm. Okay. Well. Councillor Carl, and then Councillor Summerfield. Yeah, comment, uh, maybe a question. I would have thought um, that this group, uh, while, we just, while we're talking about connection with community, um, probably suggested that they, you know, they mightn't be experts. We, we can't uh, probably draw any conclusions here, or we, we definitely can't. We're going to go out for expressions of interest. And in that draft terms of reference, under those suite of dot points, if we aim low, um, <coughs> low target, but if you put some strategic dot points, and, and I would think that, I would have thought this council, and not only this council, councils in the future, would be trying to harness expertise and strategic thinking around um, uh, planning into the future for future communities based on some of these dot points. Um, whilst there is a direct interface with operational matters for any council, um, it's critically important that we look at the overarching issues that face all of us, despite our personal beliefs about any one of these topics. Um, whether that be climate change, climate resilience, uh, whatever. Um, I would have thought as an ad we are trying to harness expert advice and support in council and the community, which are one in the same, moving forward in the most appropriate manner with the challenges that face uh, are ahead of us, that face all of us, concerning environment. So uh, we can words, wordsmith this all we like, but as long as, in my view, we don't lose the strategic intent. That's the number one primary purpose of this advisory, and it should be for most advisory committees, unless they're stated as an operational um, or assistance to council. I, I just think that's a context we need to be thinking in. I know. I, I, th I take your point, Councillor Carl. Councillor Summerfield? Thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks for that, Bill. I agree. So if I could just point out to councillors, the second last dot point I think covers off what we've been concerned about. And I would like to move um, an, an additional dot point in the committee recommendation that there be an amendment to the terms of reference um, with dot point 245 um, there'd be a full stop after climate resilience, removing the final words, and that um, the next dot point, advising council on matters relating to sustainability, so removing and advocate to the community, mm. because that is covered off in that second last dot point. So if I could move that, please. Um, Councillor Summerfield moves that amendment. Do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Melissa Taylor? Can I just have a, just a question? Yes. In re, and that's the whole motion. In, um, in, in the no, item three, it talks about councillors, um, you know, a chair and, and three other councillors. Yes. Would that be nominated? Is that the intent, that those people are nominated today? Well, um, my understanding, Councillor Macdonald, is that when the nominations come back for council, we might appoint the chair um, at that point. If that's, yep, yeah, that's the will of council, yeah. Um, just going back to Councillor Summerfield's amendment there, so we had a mover, so is that, that I'll probably need to be guided by some um, process here. That's going to be the whole motion now. Just 
need to adopt. Just need to adopt that um, amendment to recommendation one, where it says as amended, and we'll just include those amendments in the attachment, in the new attachment. Okay. Um, okay. So I've just could take a couple more comments before we uh, move into debate. So I had Councillor Shine. Uh, I'm just wondering. Well, well that's, that's the moved into debate, Madam Chair, because we've got a, a mover and a. Okay. Beg your pardon. Okay. So do I have someone speaking in? Favour of the motion. I haven't even given my comment yet. Uh, Melissa Taylor. Sorry, I'm not. Um... Just a point of order, Madam Chair. If you are the chair of this meeting, if another councillor hasn't hasn't had a, a, a question or query um, raised and answered, exactly, you still have that opportunity to do that now. Okay. I know Councillor McMahon's had his hand up there yes, for a while. Yes. And Councillor Shine had a question too. Thank you. Well, as soon as they start talk in debate, that's when it stops. Mm -hmm. If there's a question or query that's required for an answer, then that can continue on. Okay. Thank you, Councillor McDonald. Councillor McMahon, did you? Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you for letting me comment on this. Um, I uh, am looking at the functions of this group as identified, and we're advising Council on environmental significance, biodiversity. Sustainable urban design. Two points later, we're advising council on uh, sustainability, energy, waste, and water cycle management. Now, these are all great things, um, but I would like to mirror Councillor Carol Taylor's comments that I would certainly like to be advised on such complex matters by people experienced to do so. And certainly, my problem with this concept from the start has been around the kind of people this may attract. And if I take you back two pages to uh, three or four of the report where it talks about criteria needed to be on this advisory committee, the first point is knowledge and understanding of the environment and sustainability issues. Um, and interest and interest in the ability and then experience in an advisory committee. These are all very... Um, in fact, I'd, I'd struggle to find too many people that didn't meet that criteria. And since day one, my objection has been that I would like to be getting advice from such complex issues on people who have some sort of experience, documented experience in that field, um, and would like the advisory committee to be made up of people who are experienced. And um, with the... the uh, the, the membership, the EOI process, uh, in those dot points there, I, I don't see them as succinct enough or... I see them as so broad that you, you'd struggle to exclude any person, really. Um, and my, my thinking was it would be good to have some sort of a recognised degree uh, in those dot points, and I'm wondering if we might be able to look at putting that in there prior to adopting this... Advisory committee. Well, look, um, who wants to comment on that? I mean, I think probably we have to rely on the staff to make judgment about who they feel is best to be on these committees, and and that's what they're here for. That's what that's their job. So they're not going to give, you know, twenty radical greenies the the job on the advisory committee. So Josie, would you like to comment on that? If I can answer, thank you. Um, while we will be collecting the responses, if you like, the final decision will be up to council. Right. And the quality of those responses um, may be that most of the people who do meet those criteria most fully are people who also have those qualifications and strong knowledge um, of the areas that we've put up there. I think precluding someone because they don't have a qualification is probably um, putting the cart before the horse. I'd like to see who's showing an interest in the um, applications that come in. However, we could put in a criteria that it, it would be well considered if you have some sort of professional qualification <coughs> in the areas that, um, if that would address your concerns. But I don't think it should be an exclusionary criteria. 
In the end, it, it will be up to councillors who is on this committee and you will be provided with all of the applicants with recommendations of who we feel should be on the committee, but in the end, it will be up to councillors to decide out of every application who the membership is made up of. Okay. Yeah, follow up if I may. Thank you for that, Tracy. I just suppose interest and passion are valuable things. But I don't know if council needs to be advised on something as complex as the environment on interest and passion alone. So um, I'd, I'd welcome that dot point. I'd even, I'd like it to be uh, compulsory, but I welcome the dot point on, um, you know, highly regarded if, if council would, would like to put that in. Well, point of order, Madam. Point of, point of order, Madam Chair. We, that's a topic and that's for a debate. Yeah. Councillors are making suggestions about what should be added or taken away. We should be doing that as part of debate. All right. So, Madam, Madam Chair, can I just, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, I'm sorry, just reassure councillors that advisory committees are advisory committees and they are made up of ordinary people that have interests and someone who's chaired one since 20, 2008 in different modes. Um, we don't need to be... When council needs to get professional advice, we will get professional advice from people who are reasonably qualified and in that space. So, I mean, I think we'd be... It'd be lovely if we got someone with professional qualifications, but I don't think it's necessary because we have our own people and then we can call people in as we want to to those committees to present and, and other things. So I don't see it as being a, a huge concern. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Shine, did you have a comment earlier? Just in relation to the procedure, the, the proposed amendment, I was just wondering when we come to consider that, um, if we could have what is currently there and also underneath that, what is then proposed to make it clear what's... Uh, I'm just okay. trying to recollect what I was... I wonder, there. too, on that, can we vote on the amendment separately? Because, yes, yeah. I would like that to be a separate... Um, yeah. ..to be a separate um, voting procedure. Should be. Yes, it Thank should. Thank you. Uh, Councillor... Uh, Carl. Um, Madam Chair, genuine question here. Um, to the GM or the officer, uh, Josie, is it a fair assumption that the way you've drafted this report, um, by casting the net wide and not being discriminatory about people with qualifications or not, you, you, you cast the net wide um, so then you go through the selection process and therefore in the actual document itself, the terms of reference, that's why you've pitched those dot points at a strategic level to give some the prospective person who's interested some scope of what this is about. It's the same as a job application, well, similar to a job application and uh, there's the criteria that uh, a council is looking for. Is that a fair assumption? Um, yes, it, it is a fair assumption in how we've drafted it, like to have a broad... Um, the terms of reference itself gives, I guess, the matters that we're seeking to be considered at the advisory committee. The selection criteria drills down a little bit more about what sort of skills and understanding that the um, expression of interest needs to demonstrate to us in order to assess one against the other. Um, in a selection process. Thank you. Councillor Bonhoff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, two questions, if I might. The first is in regard to the proposed amendment from Councillor Summerfield. Am I correct in saying that that has been separated out, but it still contains two aspects. The first is the omission of the words climate change, and the second is the omission of the advocacy. Is that correct? Is that correct, Mr CEO? Mm. If, and if that is the case... You just I look at the... Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, please. Um, our understanding is if you just look at the screen now, dot point five, dot point six are those as amended. Okay, thank you. Uh, then I would um, I would 
foreshadow then, if that particular amendment is defeated, that I would move an amendment whereby the, the omission of the words, um, the advocacy point is retained and the climate change stays in the motion. That's the first point. The second point I'd like to make is in regards to page uh, three of four of the report. Dot point number three, we've spoken about this previously, interest and understanding of local government services and programs from an environment and sustainability perspective. And I would propose an amendment where that dot point is removed because the local government um, exposure is covered off already in the subsequent dot point. Um, ability to contribute at a, such and such at a local government level. And my concern with that and the reason for doing so is that from a strategic perspective, we've got an abundance of local government knowledge within council. And so I would, I, would, I would not like to see the criteria upon which we assess people too heavily weighted on local government experience because I, as I said, we, we've kind of got that covered already. Okay. So, okay, Councillor Bonhoff, thank you. I think you make a good point there. Could I just now, I'm just probably, yeah, Councillor, the CEO. Just ask a, a, a clarifying question on that. Yeah. Were you talking about changing the um, advisory committee, committee terms of reference or were you talking about the report? Report. Report. Because you can't change the report. No. Oh, sorry, yeah. so. So if that's reflected in the terms of reference, you can change the terms of reference. Thank so you. which which bit were you there on the terms of reference? Just to clarify so we can change it. Uh, where is it? Apologies, councillors. Now, it's always the way when you need to find it, you can't. Mm -hmm. No, it's not there. No, it's not there, Miss. It's on page um, 42 of 293, and um, mm. it's not there. So. Okay. Is it okay? Is it is it okay as it stands now? Well, that's the report that she's. Yes. Done. So the report then um, is not reflected in the um, no. in the terms of reference. So please disregard then that final point, and I I stand by my foreshadowing of the separation of those two dot points. Should the motion for the amendment be defeated, Councillor Carr. Just a point of clarification, wouldn't that be as per the officer's recommendation then to save all that typing? Um, because I, my understanding is Councillor Von Hoff is foreshadowing that if those amendments put out by Councillor Summerfield um, don't uh, receive support, um, then her suggestion would be to go back as per the initial recommendation of the officer's report. Is that, am I, or am I? Yep. On, on, the, on one on, point. On, on your first point. Forget the second one. We've clarified that. So it would be as per the original recommendation, wouldn't it be? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're really testing my skills as a chair, Councillor Carl. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you're happy with to to climate change left in it? If, it, if you the, sure. And the point that the advocacy, advocacy is is not included, that's the, that's, pardon me, the um, amendment that I am foreshadowing. Okay. Councillor Taylor, did you have a question? Madam Chair, I move a procedural motion that the motion be, the amendment be put, please. Okay. Now, Mr CEO, you're going to have to guide me here. Can we just clarify first um, the foreshadowed motion? If you just, It's just up on the screen. I just want to make sure that it actually reflects um, what Councillor Bonhoff was proposing. Which was the original motion, wasn't it, Councillor Von Hoff? No. So you're amend proposing to amend dot point six. Yeah. Just one, counting one, two, three, four, six. That's correct. Just dot point six, advising council on, matter. on matters relating to. So maybe it doesn't even need to be included. I mean, I hear the points about these. Advisory committees, this is the function of, of advisory committees. Um, 
my, my issue, I suppose, is with the advocacy aspect of it. So I'm happy to um, modify that to, say, in, relay information to and from or delete it entirely, whatever um, will be supported, really. Just a, my only comment to that, Councillor Von Hoff, is um, the dot point, liaising and seeking input when necessary, is almost uh, interlinking. But I think, you know, having those, those um, parts set out, energy, waste and water cycle management. I, I like the fact that that's in there as an example of the things that... Madam Chair, been. I have a point of order. I have moved a procedural motion that the motion be put. Thank you. Okay. That, um, that's appropriate that we deal with that as a procedural motion, but we just wanted to clarify what that, um, that foreshadowed motion is. But it may not even be relevant if this other one gets up, so... I don't need a seconder. <laughs> dealing, we're currently dealing with my amendment. Thank you. Um, and you can do the foreshadowed one after my that, amendment if my right. amendment gets lost. So if we just go back to councillor. Well, like my, my, um, what I'm thinking. Point of order. Does anybody know what a procedural motion is? Yes, I'm quite familiar. The. Um, we just the four, the if we go back to the original motion, which was it's the committee recommendation. The motion is really actually what with councillor we haven't voted on anything, and the procedural motion includes councillor Summerfield's um, points. Thank you. Which is which is as I think I understand that's what's on the screen at this point in time. Very much. Is that pro that's what you um, that's it. Right. To vote on now. So this is what we're voting on now, if you just leave that on the screen. Part one. part one and the existing two and three, I would imagine. They're not proposing on changing two and three? Yeah, so it's... Okay, so... so it's one, two and three, and the uh, recommendation one has those amendments in dot point five and dot point six. Okay, so the motion is including Councillor Summerfield's amended amendments so we are voting on that all those in favor so it's the removing of the advocacy and change and removal of climate the words climate change is in essence isn't it councillor summerfield okay all those in favor with the amend amendments that's one two three four five motions lost so the foreshadowed motion from Councillor Von Hoff is the inclusion of the words climate change as well as ad advocacy, as well as the other two dot points. So you move that, Councillor Von Hoff. Can we have a seconder for that, please? Is that, sorry, is that the motion? We'll just make sure you've got the right motion up there for you. <laughs> sorry for the confusion, Councillors. Correct. It's just that one change on dot point six. Yep. That's uh, that's the motion that I'm moving. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Carl seconds. All those in favour? So, Madam Chair, I'd like the opportunity to speak against that. Oh, Thank beg you. your pardon. Okay. Um, and the reason is, I think our advisory committees should all be somewhat the same. And uh, and and we, you know, we've got terms of reference for many advisory committees. And with this one, we've gone way outside. The role of an advisory committee is for advocacy. Let's go into debate. Okay, so can I have someone speak? Councillor Von Hoff, would you like to speak for the motion, please? Uh, sure, thank you, Madam Chair. So I am in favour of an advisory committee on the environment. I believe that it is an issue that is of great concern um, and importance to the community and our constituents. I, I look forward to hearing from people with considerable expertise on, on climate matters and environment matters in this. And, and my reason for that one dot point change is just the advocacy that, that we advocate for the community and it's a very strong word and that the function of an advisory committee, as has previously been stated, is to advise and it is, it is to be assumed that they would be relaying information uh, from council back to the community and from the community to council. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Von Hoff. Councillor Taylor, do you... Thank you, Madam Chair. I too support the advisory committee on the environment. 
um, as mentioned by Councillor Von Hoff. We have advisory committees in many roles in Council and they've worked very well. And this one, for some reason, when we've had the in information session, this one has gone over and above and put other things in there. It's supposed to be a strategic terms of reference and we've gone and put all the lovely fuzzy words in there. Now, the role of all advisory committees is to advocate for the community and to take information back to the community, not advocate to the community, take information back to the community and to actually bring questions, queries and suggestions back to that advisory committee. Now that's how they all are supposed to work and they do, they work quite well. So I don't know why we're going over and above and putting all these things in here that just might make us all feel good but it's not strategic at all. It's, um, it, it is verging on the ridiculous, I think. We want people to be passionate, we want them to be there, we want them to understand how councils work and the restrictions that we work under, including financial in, um, complexities. And then we, we, we spelling out all these words. Uh, we are the council, we advocate for our community as well. And we're supposed to be putting information back to the community. So these people that are there representing on these advisory committees are actually there as community representatives. And that's their role. So they're not, their role isn't to advocate. Their role is to take information backwards and forwards. And I don't suggest, I don't, I do support the committee. I don't support us, we should have had a strategic terms of reference and we've got too much in there which makes it very com complex and it covers everything, so to speak, really. Do I have a speaker against the motion? Against. Or, or, or. Oh, I beg your pardon. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I could see how you may have got a little confused there because I actually think Councillor Taylor is aligned more fully in favour of this yeah. motion as it sits than she is against, to be perfectly honest. Um, removing the word advocacy does exactly what Councillor Taylor has asked for. Uh, I've got no problems with it as it is. It's been a good discussion, good debate, looking forward to it getting into action. And I'm sure uh, in two years' time when, uh, when it comes up to review um, and the members come up for review, I'm sure that we'll have perhaps a different view on things as well. So more than happy to support it as it is. Okay. If there's no one to speak against, I put the motion before you. Um, all those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. The motion is carried. Councillors, I thank you for your debate on that. I'm sorry for my leadership and not um, um, conducting the meeting perhaps in a, a much more structured way, but I, I guess it just d demonstrates the passion around this committee and, um, and we all want to get it right, but this has come out of the community. This has been a, something that's been driven out of the community that they want us to do it and they want us to do it right. So. I don't think we have to be afraid of the words climate change. We don't have to be afraid of the words advocacy. They're real. They're here in our environment, in our in our community. And, and people who have written to us and begged us to do something like this, this will be a, a historic day if this gets through council next week. So thank you for your passion. And, um, and I think we're going to be on the right side of history. Thank you. So with that, we move to item number five which is the request for a reduction of full waiver of infrastructure charges in relation to development permit for a material change of use code hospital extension located at 19 and 22 to 36 Scott Street, East Toowoomba. Madam so, Chair. Yes, Councillor. Uh, I have a declaration of, uh, of perhaps a conflict of interest. Pursuant to section 175E of the Local Government Act 2009, I would like to inform the meeting that have a personal interest in this matter, which I recognise may be a real or perceived conflict of interest, the particulars of which as follows. I'm a member of the St Vincent's Regional Advisory Committee and the applicant for the request being considered as St Vincent's Private Hospital. This advisory committee makes no decisions. It's a community advisory committee and doesn't have any oversight of budgets or spending of by the hospital. I have determined, and it has been suggested by the um, independent uh, assessor, that this personal interest is not of sufficient significance. It will lead me to making a decision on this matter that is contrary to the public interest. I will best perform my responsibility of serving the overall public interest of the whole of Council's area by participating in the discussion and voting on the matter. However, I acknowledge that the remaining councillors must now determine, pursuant to section 175E, 
4 of the Local Government Act 2009 whether I have a real conflict of interest in this matter or a perceived conflict of interest, and if so, whether I must leave the meeting while this matter is discussed and voted on, or I may participate in the meeting in relation to this matter, including by voting on the matter. Mm. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, councillors, any questions of Councillor Taylor in regards to her declaration? Councillor Von Hoff? Just clarity, if I might. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. You're not paid for your position on that committee, Councillor Taylor? No, and we, have, we are just a community advisory committee. No, I am not paid. Thank you. Councillor Carl, did you have a question? No. Councillor Taylor, I might ask a question in terms of how, um, how do you view your impartiality towards um, voting on something like this? Madam Chair, I'm the member of a community which we have voted for many others as well as this, and uh, this is just, I'm a community liaison like our advisory committees, a community liaison to gauge public opinion on matters of, of um, mercy and, uh, and, and that sort of thing with the hospital. So I don't think I have any uh, a problem in keeping my thoughts uh, fair and reasonable and equitable with the other matters that we over have voted on. Okay, thank you. So, councillors, how does everyone feel? Um, I'll just ask you to raise your hands if you feel that Councillor uh, Carol Taylor has a conflict here. Could I just ask you a question? Yes, thank you. This, this isn't the first time this has come up. Mm. Just through consistency, I wondered what we ruled last time, and I thought it was that Councillor Taylor was out of the room. Yeah. She, um, Wendy has advised that she's left without a decision. Left without didn't ask the oh, room to um, to vote last time. Is that correct, Wendy? Didn't ask. Yet. Right. Or of her own volition. Right. This time she's decided to test the room, which is perfectly fine as well. Okay. Um, look, as an advisory group to a body such as uh, St Vincent's, I would be um, being overcautious if I was Councillor Taylor in this case. Um, if it was me personally, that's where. They, therefore, uh, for me, um, I'd like to be overcautious for her and suggest that she does stay out of the room for this vote. Any other comments, Councillor Shine? Yes. Um, yeah, no, I agree with Councillor McMahon. Uh, um, McMahon. You're making my mistakes now, Councillor Shine. Wrong man. <laughs> <laughs> it's McDonald even. Um, and uh, frankly, I don't think it would pass the pub test as, uh, as a uh, impartial participant in this matter. Thank you. Councillor Nancy Summerfield. Yeah, thanks. Um, Councillor Megan, I, I'm just, um, I just recall quite strongly how passionately Councillor Taylor spoke advocating for, for this waiver previously, um, or not this waiver, but the previous waiver that was put before us. And so um, I feel it would be in her best interest to protect her by staying out. That's, that's just my feeling. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments? She, that uh, Councillor Taylor stays. Oh, hang, hang on, Councillor McDonald. Councillor Carl? Um, question through you, Chair, to the CEO. Um, regardless of how, what Council thinks, as whether conflicted or not, is it... Does the Councillor um, have to stay out or is in a committee forum? or a, I, I just recall some advice from senior counsel in recent times. Mm. Whether they come back in and don't participate in the, or can participate in the discussion, but not in the voting. Yes, I'm, I'm just seeking some guidance there. I, I'm, a, I, I'm not clear. I think it might, might be worth recalling councillor Taylor into the room and asking her a question. She said during her, um, uh, when she just before she left the room, there she said that she'd received advice from the office of the independent assessor that she doesn't have a conflict. Um, and is it in relation to the same matter when it was considered before, or is that another matter that she was talking about? Because if she has that, if she already has that advice that she doesn't have a conflict of interest. And she didn't really need to 
declare this conflict of interest at this point in time. And that's why I'm confused because I was half, I possibly should have asked that before Councillor Taylor went out, but could we get her back in to clarify? There's no reason why you couldn't get her back in and ask that question. Yeah. Sorry, the mind wasn't moving fast enough. No, that's okay. I think it's all new territory to all of us, isn't it, a little bit? And we all want to do the right thing. Councillor Taylor, we just had a couple more questions that we felt we needed to clarify, um, which we hadn't thought of before um, you left the room. So, Councillor Carl. Yeah, it, Councillor Taylor, it was in relation to um, you made a comment about the Office of the Independent Assessor determined that you didn't have a conflict. Is that directly in relation to this uh, matter, your membership of the advisory committee? Or? Yes, Councillor Carl. There was a, a, a complaint made up against me when this original decision was made and, um, and I went through the... In, I was trying to find it, actually, to give it to councillors, but I can't find it. Um, the independent assessor said I didn't have a conflict of interest and, indeed, should never have left the room at all. So, so then I, that's where I thought not quick enough, then should you even be uh, uh, declaring a conflict and asking councillors to vote on this matter if it's already been determined by the Office of the Independence? Well, actually, um, through you, Madam Chair, yeah, I feel more comfortable doing that, Councillor Carl. So where are we now? I th the, the, uh, the CEO was also privy to that uh, correspondence and uh, that's what was said. But myself personally, uh, I feel more confident asking councillors to uh, decide for me. Thank you. Thank you. I guess, Mr CEO, that's the councillor's prerogative in the end, is it? Um, I, I think the conclusion is obvious if the... Um, legislative body has de made a, de a determination on this matter. Um, I could say council be on very safe ground to say that it's happy for council, councillor Taylor to remain in the meeting based on some previous advice um, in relation to this matter that she doesn't have a conflict of interest. So therefore it would be, a, um, but I would specify your reasons and that, that would be an appropriate reason. I'm happy to move that Councillor Taylor, um, based on her advice um, to us in correspondent, previous correspondence as indicated by Councillor Taylor from the Office of the Independent Assessor, stating that she does not have a conflict in this matter. Given this information, I move that she doesn't have a conflict. Second that. Councillor Antonio. Uh, we say that uh, I cannot see what Councillor Taylor would have to gain from this decision, uh, other than she would lose a bit of her, you know, she would use a bit of her passion for this particular area. And I can't see where she's got a single thing to gain. And I think you know, even discussing this, we're going a fair way beyond the line. Well, I think the fact, um, as reminded by the CEO, that she's had the, um, the, the advice from the Office of the Independent Assessor, I suppose it's, um, it's in relation to the impartiality. And that's, um, as Councillor Shine has said, does it pass the pub test? But, okay, so all of those who feel that Councillor Taylor should stay in the room. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's carried. So could you ask Councillor Taylor to come back in the room for the discussion? Oh, there, Chris. I'll make, just wait for Councillor Taylor, will I? Maybe uh, in the uh, bathroom. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chris, we might kick it off, I think. Thank you. Okay, thank you, yes. Madam Chair. Uh, good morning, councillors, council officers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in September 2019, 
Council approved an extension to St Vincent's Private Hospital, East Toowoomba. Uh, approval MCUC 2019-1352 was for a new two-storey building for the emergency and radiology departments, along with an ancillary cafe and florist. But the approved development had a GFA of 2,753 square metres and the infrastructure charges notice levied a charge of approximately $353,023. Uh, St Vincent's is a not-for-profit registered with the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profits Commission. Uh, in December 2019, Council resolved to defer 50% of the infrastructure charges levied in the infrastructure charges notice. At about the same time, Council received change application, MCUC, 2019-1352B. Uh, this change increased the GFA by 52 square metres and triggered a new infrastructure charges notice uh, with a levy charge of approximately $360,482. Uh, Council's December 2019 resolution is considered to have been overtaken by the change to approval and the change to the infrastructure charges notice. There is no current policy for discounting or deferring infrastructure charges for not-for-profit organisations, so each request is considered at Council's discretion. Uh, this means that the officer's recommendation is to refuse the request. However, Council may choose to offer a deferral or reduction, and there are options for this in the report. A deferral or discount will need an infrastructure agreement. For the previous request for St Vincent's, Council required an infrastructure agreement to defer the charges while the use remains operated by a not-for-profit organisation. This means that if the operator of the use changes to a commercial operator, the infrastructure charges become payable. So I refer you to the report and in particular to the options identified in the report. Thank you, Chris. Questions, councillors? Councillor Summerfield? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So I just um, am curious that we're still putting options in our reports. I thought that we received legal advice to say that we weren't allowed to do that anymore, that we had to uh, be given the officer's recommendation for consideration and for us, if we wanted to as councillors, to come up with a, a different outcome that we could actually do that. Is that correct? Well, we did have this discussion this morning and um, as Councillor Carl has brought it up a few times, so I think that's a discussion that we probably really need to take up with the CEO because it has been raised a couple of times. So perhaps just if we deal with what we've got in front of us and pursue that um, outside this session. Okay, because it's just not Thank the you. first time that we've raised the fact that we're not allowed to do it. So okay. if we could so just... Mr. Uh, CEO, we'll... Um, <coughs> um, yeah, officers can develop options in um, in reports for council to consider and ultimately make the recommendation in relation to what that option may be. Um, however, that would should be of their own volition to actually make those or produce those options um, rather than having something developed on a potential for something to come from councillors in relation to the final determination or recommendation in, into a matter. But we need to, um, I suppose, ensure that we have a, an appropriate process in place so that alternate recommendations can be developed by councils if they need to, um, to, that they could then put to a council meeting at the appropriate time, just making sure that those recommendations could stand alone and, and are lawful. So it's a process I think we'll need to work through with council to ultimately ensure that we've got that process right. Uh, thanks very much for that response, Brian. And obviously for councillors around the table, having these options assists us and also assists um, the record keeping. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that we had our ducks in the row properly. Thank you. Are there any other questions about uh, Councillor Carl and Councillor McMahon? Uh, I comment, I totally agree with the CEO that there needs to be a process over the existing process of bringing um, alternate options, um, and I believe councillors should uh, afford themselves the time if the majority feel so, or it should be tested in the appropriate forum and, and worked up through the appropriate process. Um, 
we know how we're supposed to interact with officers or uh, and at what level um, to uh, ask questions or seek guidance on matters that are lawful as far as legislation around planning. But to do it the way we are now, I believe, puts us at risk. Uh, remember, there is a camera, there is an applicant, and there is an appellant. Um, I think it's in councils and the community's best interest uh, for outcomes that position council in a uh, least risk position around um, matters where they might, may end up, as we all know, with uh, litigation in planning. So I agree with the CEO, we need to develop a, an appropriate process. I'm of, of the firm belief that the current one is probably not the best one. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a commitment there. Councillor Shine. Oh, just a, a question. Uh, I'm intrigued as to uh, why um, this hospital has been treated somewhat differently to the Clifton and Pittsworth Hospital uh, in the past, uh, where the uh, reduced charge was down to nil in those two instances, but I think 50% in relation to to uh, St Vincent's. Do, do, are you aware of what the, ra the reason was um, for Council to decide that way in the past with Pittsworth and Clifton as opposed to this one? I have no information on the thought processes or the decision making that sit behind some of the other uh, decisions of Council, uh, but we do identify a table in the table, uh, the decisions that were made based on the site, the approval, and the um, and the value of the infrastructure charges notice. Mm. Uh, if I can com comment, Councillor Shine, uh, um, the there has been it's always been at council's discretion, and that's where the um, the arbitrary nature of these come in. But I suppose in terms of the country hospitals, it's always viewed as an you know is it through an economic stimulus lens. Is it? because those, those hospitals are providing employment, one of the biggest employments of the town. So, I mean, I, I can't speak for other councillors, but some of that has been the logic behind some of those decisions. And I know Councillor O'Shea rails against the inconsistency. We all do, I suppose. Um, but that there, there, there is no consistency, I guess, or there hasn't been previously. Yeah, well, the employment one's hard to understand because employment is necessary in Toowoomba as well as Clifton. Yes, true. Now, Councillor McMahon, I beg your pardon, I skipped over you. All right, thank you, Chair. Um, through you to Chris. I'm just wondering, um, you spoke of um, if we if we were to give a waiver, we have to put an infrastructure agreement together. Can you just give me some background of what that is and, and how hard is it to compile? Uh, yeah, infrastructure agreements are... a. a a fairly common mechanism for development approvals. They relate to development approvals and particularly council uh, uses them uh, where we have an infrastructure charges notice, which is a calculated in accordance with our, our charges resolution in effect at the time the development is approved. Uh, varying from the infrastructure charges notice requires uh, resolution of council uh, and an infrastructure agreement, which is effectively a deed between council, the landowner and potentially the operator of the use, to vary the value that's payable or certain requirements that might be uh, uh, conditioned in the approval by council. So it's a fairly standard document. Uh, we have a, a template that we use for simple infrastructure agreements and I think we charge the applicant somewhere in the order of $500 or $550 uh, for, the, um, uh, for the legal cost associated with drafting and um, completing the IA. Good. Um, Madam, thank you for that answer. Madam Chair, in the um, original committee meeting, which is attachment one, there's the motion um, to actually defer for 50%. I'm wondering if I may move a similar motion to this, but we just change the infrastructure name. Is that possible to do that? So in other words, move a motion that we defer a payment of 50% um, with this material change of use code um, until it's operated by a commercial um, must be reflected in infrastructure agreement. 
So you're foreshadowing um, if the recommendation is lost that you'd, similar to the original... Um, it may hit the actual motion. Motion, Madam Chair. Oh, okay. This can be the motion if, if Councillor McMahon chooses to okay. move this motion. All right. So is that what you're proposing, Councillor McMahon? Yeah. So that committee recommendation, but we change the um, material change of use code to that big long one that ends in B that we have in front of us now. Mm hmm Okay. Um, do we <laughs> need a mover for that? We have a new motion. Yeah, and you're seconding it, Councillor Summerfield. Thank you. I'll just say, yeah. um, if, I, if you don't mind, just uh, I just wanted to reaffirm your words earlier to Councillor Schoen that um, these small communities rely so much on um, external support to try and stimulate these little towns <coughs> and keep them plugging along. So I think that fully explains why we have done that in the past. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Sunfield. Councillor O'Shea, did you have a Yeah, thanks, comment? Madam Chair. Well, I'll just cut to the chase. I'll, I'll foreshadow a, um, a motion. Shall this one that's on the books be defeated for 100%? Okay. Happy to change the original. Can I do that? You want to change the original? 100% waiver. What's your motion? Have a look at what's happened here. Changes the. Okay, sorry, withdraw that comment. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <coughs> we'll get there in the end with our process, won't we? Um, so um, I have a mover and a second uh, for the um, amended motion. Is that where I'm at? Motion, Madam Chair. It's a new, new motion. The new motion. Change. New motion. Yes. For a 50% waiver um, with deferral. Should the should the use change? Fifty. Did we need to put the um, number, the reference number, MCUC two zero one nine one three five two B in there? No. No. You know what we're talking about, or is is that? That's okay. Good advice. Councillor Carl, did you have a comment? Um, question to you, Madam Chair. Forgive me. Um, are you? Still a member of the board for the Umba Hospital, um, and if so, how do you think your vote may be in the context of um, another hospital, albeit a private ent entity? Um, I'm a member, Councillor Carl, of the yeah, no, fair enough. Um, the Hospital Foundation, not the not the DDHHS board. Yeah, right. Yeah, which is a separate arm um, raising money for the hospital. So. I mean, I'm happy to take councillors' um, opinion on it, but I don't feel conflicted at all, yeah. Um, but just before I move on to you, Councillor Von Hoff, I guess in the midst of this, um, testing the room, there's any... Um... Councillor Von Hoff might share a hand up for... I, is it in relation to this? It's, it's along the same lines, which okay. is that I'm a member of the... Um, Clifton Hospital Board, which is cited as one of the examples in the in the um, there was a decision in previous term of council. Um, okay, well, why don't we do with these one at a time? I guess um, so. Um, I um, what do I need to do? I need to declare that I'm or how, do, how does the process work? Yeah, you you wanted to test the room. Did you say so you you wanted uh, to do that? Well, I don't. Or did you just want to ask? Did you just want to ask if any councillor has the opinion you may have a conflict of interest if that's the case? Appropriate. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess councillor Carl does because he's asked the question. No. Well, I just wanted clarity as to what whether you were what you're actually in fact a member of, and I guess that gives me some clarity. It's is it. Yeah, it's the same question we asked Councillor Taylor before. Can you, you know, vote? Is it subjectively or objectively? Well, one of those two. <laughs> objectively. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> and it'll be the same in my view for Councillor Von Hoff. You know, uh, member of a board, hospital. Uh, you know, does that influence your vote to vote in favour to support St Vincent's because it's another hospital and has the same similar objectives for the community? I don't know. Competition. Yeah. Competition. I don't know. 
Um, well, I'm not sure whether you're asking me, but... Um, um, and uh, I guess that's for the two of you to consider. Um, in, 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 albeit you're involved in raising funds for the hospital foundation. I, well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and fair I'm enough just, question to ask too. I'm, I'm better off raising it in this forum than it's appropriate um, and rather than thinking about it afterwards. Of course. Um, hang on. I'm just going to seek clarity from the CEO about the process here, what I should do. Um, councils as an individual councillors can declare if they believe they have a conflict of interest. In, I think in both cases, the councillors haven't believed that they have a conflict of interest. However, every other councillor around the table has a duty to raise um, if they think there's a potential conflict of interest in, in an issue. I think councillor um, Carl has raised that concern. If that's the case, it would be probably better that um, advisable to test the room in each case. Okay. We leave the room for that, Madam Chair. Sorry. I'll just let the CEO finish, Councillor Taylor. Sorry, Councillor yeah. von Hoff should yes. ask, should we leave the room for that? Uh, yes. You, so you de you declare that there's a potential conflict of interest and ask the council to determine whether you do or don't. So we need to do those one at a time. Yeah, one at yeah. a time. Um, so you have my declaration there, Wendy, and Councillor Carl. I'll have to get you to assume the chair. Madam Chair, sorry, sorry to add further confusion to it, but in the in the, uh, in the interest of consistency, I, I and, and where this is heading, I, I obviously probably have to state a. I'll probably have to ask the same questions. But now that the hospital foundations come up, seeing my wife's an employee there, so I'm probably in the mm -hmm. same wheelhouse. Okay. Well, we might thank you, Councillor O'Shea. So we might deal with mine first. <coughs> Councillor Carl to assume the chair. <coughs> Is there any questions that anyone wanted to ask me? No. Okay. It's chair. Yeah, hey, Councillor Taylor. Mr. Chair, um, I don't believe that uh, Councillor. Uh, Hara Sullivan has a conflict of interest. She's uh, all the hospitals, and I mean all the hospitals, work together. And particularly in this COVID crisis, they are all working together. And this is a fundraising arm of the Toowoomba Hospital, uh, base hospital, and uh, I personally don't believe that there is any conflict of interest. This is a planning matter, and we have set precedents before and, uh, you know, I think councils need to be fair and reasonable. I don't believe that Councillor Harris-Sullivan has any conflict of interest in making this decision on a waiver of fees. Thanks, Councillor Taylor. Councillor's comments? Councillor Summerfield? Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, having worked previously many years ago at St Vincent's Hospital, I can assure you, while they all work together, they're also very competitive against each other. Um, but my thinking in this is... Previously, when we've talked about memberships and things, we were cleared that you could be a member of an organisation such, and I always use, I've resigned, but I used to be a member of the Turf Club, and it was all clarified that we could actually stay in the room. However, being on a board is a different ball game. Being on a board, you're actually in an executive position. So I'm, and I know that Previously, we've been, it's been clarified that if you're in, you're a chair or a secretary or a treasurer or whatever of an organisation, then you've got a conflict. Well, if you're a board, I believe you've got a conflict as well. So for me personally, I feel that um, if you're on the board, you're providing direction to an organisation and I believe there's a conflict. Councillors, I, I just... Councillor Ta Melissa Taylor. Yeah. To the board. Thank you, Chair. Um, in just in response to Councillor Summerfield's um, statement, there, the Hospital Foundation um, is a very different yes. organisation. It actually doesn't provide strategic um, direction to the base hospital at all. It is purely a fundraising arm that fundraises for things like bursaries or education. It's, 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 not a, it's got nothing to do with the planning of the base hospital. It's got nothing to do with um, the strategic direction of the base hospital at all. So, um, and if there's a conflict, then 
I'm the same as James, Councillor, sorry, O'Shea. Um, my father's the chairman of the board, so I would also have to claim that conflict, which I tried to do before, but got overlaid, so. So, well, well I don't take, believe she's got a conflict at all. Yeah, but I, I just on your comments there, Councillor Melissa, I'll take some advice from the CEO. He's, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I, your father is the chair of yes. the... Hospital Foundation. Toowoomba Hospital Foundation, okay. So I, I'm unclear, um, is Councillor Megan, is she a board member or is it, a, is it a, a committee or what? I don't know. Board member of the Hospital Foundation. Yeah, right. The fundraising arm. <coughs> mm. She's not a board member of the Darling Downs Hospital Board. Yep. She's the Hospital Foundation. I, I have... Mm. I'm comfortable to move that you come in the room. Yeah, and I'm 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 comfortable yep. to second that. So yeah, um, yep. so we've got Councillor McDonald has moved, Councillor Carol Taylor's second. Um, those in favour that she does not have a conflict. It's carried. Reasons. You get reasons right. So reasons being. So the the reason being that the hospital foundation is a fundraising. Uh, uh, independent organisation State control. supporting the yep. Darling Downs Hospital uh, and has no strategic um, input. input into the operation or, or, uh, or running of the hospital. Yeah. Okay. Chair, would you like me to get her? Yes. Thank you, councillors. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll wait for the chair to come back in. Okay, thank you everyone. So now we move to Councillor Von Hoff's declaration. Okay, where is it? Sorry, Wendy. I'll just I'll just go through and correct me if I'm okay so I have a declaration of a possible conflict of interest pursuant to section 175e of the local government act 2009 I would like to inform the meeting that I have a personal interest in this matter which I recognize may be a real or perceived conflict of interest the particulars of which are as follows the nature of the interest is I am a member of the Clifton um, hospital board I have oh um, I have determined that this personal interest is not of su sufficient significance, that it will lead me to making a decision on this matter that is contrary to the public interest. I will best perform my responsibility of serving the overall public interest of the whole of the Council's area by p participating in the discussion and voting on this matter. However, I acknowledge that the remaining councillors must now determine, pursuant to one, section 175E4 of the Local Government Act 2009, a, whether I have a real conflict of interest in this matter or a perceived conflict of interest in this matter, and B, if so, whether, point one, I must leave the meeting while this matter is discussed and voted on, or two, I may participate in this meeting in relation to the matter, including by voting on the matter. Thank and you. Is there any questions for Councillor Von? Areas, and also, if I could get clarity that, Chris, this... This, what we're talking about here with St Vincent's is for the expansion for an operating theatre and emergency room, is it not? X-ray and emergency expansion, which is being built now. Um, and councillors are probably already aware of this, but um, the private hospital at Clifton does not, um, it does not have any tertiary operating or th theatre. It's a, it's a country hospital. Um, doesn't provide those services. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Von Hoff. Uh, is there any discussion around Councillor Von Hoff's conflict of interest? She stays in the chair. And I'm happy to second that, thank you. They're not in competition in any way, and uh, I, I believe that they're quite separate, yeah. Thank you. Councillor Cal. Yeah, I, I just had a question, and it's not about whether they're in competition or whether they support each other or not. It's about we're here discussing 
a waiver of infrastructure charges for a hospital and does that does the councillor in their own mind um, make a decision that isn't influenced sympathetic to the sector being involved in the sector at a board level it's not about apples for apples or it's more about that's why I raised the question is it is it a, a, a decision that you can make on on a, a wavering of infrastructure charges that is a foregoing of revenue to council and could that be perceived out there in the public in the community as well how would the councillor be able to vote entirely independently on that when they're involved in the sector at a board level on another hospital, regardless of size, shape or or what it's about. I'm, that's why I raised it. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to take the councillor hat off and think about it from a community member viewing this a meeting. And said hospital has had a... Um... Councillor Taylor, did you have a comment? I did because... Um, thank you, Madam Chair, because... Um, um, we have a list of the hospitals that have already gained, and that was prior to Councillor Von Hoff's being there. So I think that it's a more a, a community service role that a Councillor Von Hoff plays there, and I don't see that there's many uh, links between the two. In fact, patients from um, the Clifton Hospital are more likely to go to St Vincent's than the other way around. Is there any other comments, Councillor Shine? No, no, look, uh, I just agree with Councillor Tata on that issue uh, and I make the comment that it's very pleasing that we have a couple of councillors who are... Absolutely. Mm. ...time on these commendable boards uh, and uh, others who have relatives uh, uh, doing supportive work, uh, working for those hospitals. It's a, it's a good thing for Toowoomba. And Councillor Shine, I wasn't saying anything disparaging. I'm agreeing with you. I think it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I misheard you. Okay, so can I have someone uh, move that Councillor Von Hoff stay in the room? Mayor already has. Oh, I beg your pardon. I've seconded it. Thank you. I oh, beg your pardon. Okay, so with that, um, all those in favour of Councillor Von Hoff staying in the room? Uh, it's carried. So we can have Councillor Von Hoff back in. Uh, now, Councillor O'Shea, did you were you declaring a, a oh. conflict as well? Just, Madam Chair, I merely just raised it, obviously, because of the points oh, made around the hospital foundation. So I won't go through the whole spiel. I don't feel I have any conflict, as I said, as I said, for stating my wife is employed at the hospital foundation. There's, all the points have been made as to why it's not a conflict, but I guess to, <laughs> I'm happy to be okay. told otherwise, if need be. So you're declaring, but you've chosen to stay in the room. Is there? Does anyone want to have a discussion around that, or Councillor Taylor? No, uh, Madam Chair, I think um, um, it, it, I think uh, Councillor O'Shea is quite right, and uh, unless unless another councillor disagrees, mm -hmm. I totally support his uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. Well, unless I'm breaking any procedural protocol, we can yes. move. Yes. You have to. He this, um, believes he has no conflict whatsoever. And no, therefore, no need to declare it. Move on. Jog on. Yeah. But if you believe you have got a conflict, then we'd have to test the room. And so it, or if any other councillor believes you may have a conflict, we'd have to so test the unless, room. Unless, unless, unless there is a need or a reason arise that anyone suggests. Otherwise, as I said, I'm happy to. Mm -hmm. But I've stated my position. I don't see any conflict. Mm -hmm. But I, I just merely raise it on the on the on the point that obviously was raised earlier around the hospital foundation and and. And a couple of points probably that Councillor Carl's made before in terms of how you make a decision. So, as I said, I'm, I don't see a conflict, but I'm happy to be guided otherwise. So, just for clarification, Mr CEO, um, in this instance, is it correct for Councillor O'Shea to declare it um, but declare he didn't have a conflict? Or um, he, he just wants to put it on the public record? If he wants to put it on the public record, I think you'd need to go, go through the process because he's perhaps formed a view there could be a, a perceived conflict, but he doesn't believe there's one, so therefore you probably should test that if that's the case. That. 
Yeah, sorry, thanks, Mr. CEO. Probably, I've, I've probably created a conflict or a confusion by raising it, so I apologise on that. So I think I probably should go through the procedure. I'll, if anyone, does anyone have any questions of me? Otherwise, I'll leave the room for. Okay. Nation, unless. Can James, just to clear. Sorry. Thanks, Councillor Summerfield. Yeah. All right. But can't um, James just declare that his wife works at the Hospital Foundation but he has no conflict of interest and he's staying in the room? Well, that's what I was asking, but Mr CEO feels that if you are declaring it, oh, I don't want to paraphrase you, but if you are declaring it, you're, you're putting it out there and so therefore the room has to uh, decide. Basically, yes. Okay. Oh, right. Probably good insurance anyway. We're going to need to schedule a bit more time for our meetings, I think. You said that last year. Two days instead of one. Say again? Have a two-day meeting instead of one. Why are we going? Look, it's quite frank. Okay. Uh, Can I have someone move that Councillor O'Shea doesn't have a conflict? Mr Mayor, Councillor Summerfield, all those in favour? It's carried. We'll get him back. Yeah. And now we're up to the recommendation. <laughs> back there again. Madam Chair, can I just uh, say that we've spent a tremendous amount of time on this, and I think we ought to work together to find, f try to find a faster method of doing this. I, I really do. Not only does it impact on all us sitting around the room, because I get a feeling that I'm wasting an awful lot of time, because we end up with the same result, but think of our staff. Think of the presenters who are here standing here waiting, 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 waiting. So I think we ought to put our heads together, and every tiny little conflict we possibly have, have it ready to go. Mm. Mm. Have it, if it has been uh, okayed in the past, let's get on with it. Because I'm sure not only our staff, but those who are watching this um, meeting, uh, they'd be wondering what the hell is going on. Mm. They'd have been drinking a lot of tea and, and leaving the room regularly, I'd imagine. Turning off, I Anyhow, <coughs> just foreshadow that we ought to put our heads around it to find a better method. Mm. Yep, thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, so, we have the recommendation before us that Council refuse the request for a reduction of infrastructure charges levied through the infrastructure charge status <coughs> issued the 27th of February 2020. No, we're not. The, the, motion, is, the motion is that Council approve. Uh, sorry, beg your pardon, Council McMahon's uh, motion. So, it's up there. I won't read it out. So, you're moving that, Councillor McMahon? Can I have a seconder? I've already seconded. Oh, you have, okay. So can we just have what Councillor McMahon is moving, thank you? Absolutely. Thank you, because uh, this is adds to confusion. We need to be very clear on what we're voting on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, it, did you want me to read it out? Yes, thank you. Okay. The Council approved deferral of payment of infrastructure charges payable, payable pursuant to infrastructure charges notices for the development permit for a material change of use code hospital extension to hospital at 19 and 22 to 36 Scott Street, East Toowoomba, for St Vincent's Private Hospital, Toowoomba, in the sum of $180,241.35, being 50% until such time as the use is operated by a for-profit organisation or the entity or the use changes. The terms of agreement for deferral must be reflected in an infrastructure agreement between council, the applicant and the owner of the subject land. Thank you. Councillor Von Hoff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to clarify, was there a foreshadowed motion from Councillor O'Shea that would reflect 100% should this motion be defeated? Is that correct? Correct. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. So everyone clear on the motion before us? So I put the motion. All those in favour? I'd like to debate. Debate. Move into debate. Sure. Councillor Carl, would you like to speak for the motion or against? Probably need to give the mover the first option, Madam Chair. Councillor McMahon. Thank you, Chair and Councillor Cahill. Happy to speak for the motion as we passed prior to my time last year that we give them 50% and they've done some minor changes and come back. And I think it's worth acknowledging that original motion and putting the same standard towards this slightly altered new um, material change of use. So happy to speak for it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Carl. Yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. Look, I, I support the hospital fraternity in this uh, community very much so. Um, my father almost passed away in one recently. Um, uh, however, um, 
St Vincent's have already, can I put it very plainly, had a bite at the cherry the first time and had a reduction. Yeah. They've gone away uh, and um, then uh, made some expansion and subsequently come back for another um, request for reduction. That's my understanding. I'm happy to be no. corrected by the officer. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I, I believe that's incorrect. Um, well, I'm not just not sure. The, it's just the GFA had increased, hadn't it, Chris? Is that? Yeah, so uh, between the original approval and the original infrastructure charges notice and the original council decision in December 2019, they've added 52 square metres of gross floor area mm -hmm. and uh, that has triggered a new infrastructure charges notice. Uh, so uh, e effectively the 2019... Uh, council resolution uh, is not considered to have any Invalid. relevance to right, the yeah. current infrastructure charges notice. Yeah. So uh, the question is is not whether the discount should apply to the difference between 353,000 and 360,000. The question is whether uh, it, it's it's taking the question again from you. Should a, should a discount apply to the infrastructure charges mm -hmm. notice? I think yeah, that's spelled out in the for report. clarity. Is that in its in entirety from so so there hasn't been a reduction on the old amount as per the like the council motion that's on the uh, so it's being totally reconsidered that hasn't been granted at this point that that's correct so the the council decision is not considered to have any effect on the current infrastructure right. charges notice so it's Apologies. effectively the opportunity to consider the whole question New. Yeah, so it starts. I, I, my apologies, to zero. I've misinterpreted the uh, the wording. Um. Okay, thanks, Councillor Carl. So, speaking against, speaking for the motion, Councillor McDonald. I'm happy to speak for the motion, Madam Chair, and um, take on board the comments that have been had around the room. Um, we actually had a lengthy discussion around this the first time it came to Council, I recall, and landed on. 50% for a variety of reasons, but the main reason was because um, the service that's provided by the hospital was uh, so significant for the benefit of the community that um, Council saw fit to provide the 50% the reduction, and I see no reason um, to have changed that decision that was made then, and therefore I support the 50%. Mm -hmm. Do I have a speaker against the motion? No? Okay, with that, I put the motion, councillors. All those in favour of the recommendation, the motion? That's one, two, three, four, five. So it's lost. So, Councillor O'Shea? Yep, so thank you, Madam Chair. So I, the motion, there we go, so yeah, foreshadowed is, is for a waiver of 100%. I'm happy to speak to that if I get a seconder. I think Danielle has got some wording here. Um, Wendy will get it up on the screen. Do we have a seconder for Councillor O'Shea's motion? Councillor Shine? Uh, as we're getting that up, are you happy to speak to it? Sure, um, Madam Chair, it's a bit of deja vu actually. I, I suppose my, my position on this hasn't changed all the, all, the, all the way through. The reason I'm supportive of the 100% is we talked before about that there isn't an A said policy, so to speak, on these not-for-profits when it comes to waiver or, or, or percentages of, of infrastructure charges. But I think the table that is in this report tells a, uh, a fairly significant story in terms of consistency of what council has offered in, in different in in other circumstances like this. And Councillor <coughs> Sean, who asked the question earlier, raised a, a good point earlier around Clifton and, and, and Pittsworth. So. Mm. Since uh, that table listed there shows the summary of a determination requests for not-for-profit organisations since 2013, by my count there's 27 there, 22 have received a 100% waiver. I, 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 I respect and understand the points of view put forward as to why it should be less, but I just feel very much so that the 100% is consistent with what we've offered as a council in the past, it, it fits all the same criteria. There is, in terms of it's a not-for-profit, uh, in, in terms of being eligible to apply for, for said amounts, as I said, reflecting what's been done in ones in the past. So I'm comfortable with the 100% the being the amount waived, and that's why I foreshadow and move this motion. Okay. 
Um, against? Yes, do I have someone speak against the motion? Councillor Summerfield? Thank you, Madam Chair. I speak very strongly against this. Um, we're talking about ratepayers' money here. We've been very generously suggesting that 50% would be a very good bit of assistance to St Vincent's Hospital. St Vincent's Hospital is quite dear to my heart, but it is a very big organisation. It comes with the backing of St Vincent's. It's a private hospital here in Toowoomba, which does very well. It has access to a large number of patients that can help support, sustain it. Um, many of those previous uh, discounts we've given are much smaller, and they're also, a lot of them are in small country towns that need that extra bit of stimulus. <coughs> to me, I think this is just being very extravagant. We're, we could quite easily be generous and give them a 50% um, waiver, and I just think this is a, a being disrespectful to our ratepayers to give them the full amount. Thank you. Do I have another speaker for the motion? Councillor Shine? Uh, yes, I, I was happy to second it on the basis that it was uh, rational, uh, having regard to what's happened uh, with two other hospitals. Uh, it's fair, therefore, and uh, it's consistent with, uh, uh, with uh, previous decisions. Uh, and, of course, ratepayers' money was, was uh, involved with the other hospitals as well. Thank you. Another speaker for the motion? Uh, against. Against. Oh, gosh. Against. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Chair. Um, I speak uh, against the motion of 100%. I did support uh, 50% um, uh, with my misinterpretation of the report. However, uh, I don't think we can uh, compare like for like here and make draw comparisons with um, uh, country-based small community hospitals. Um, the likes of St Vincent's and other majors in this uh, city are very major in the fact that they are what's known as, on my understanding as a layperson, are partner hospitals with private health care uh, funds where they're able to um, generate quite an amount of business. So we're not talking about the same thing here. These are partner hospitals with private health care funds, pri uh, private health funds, uh, which puts them into a league of their own. Um, I do agree that it is too generous. Uh, if we don't uh, receive infrastructure charges, we know that the largest source of revenue for this council is the ratepayer. Um, so I cannot support 100%. I'm happy to support 50, but not 100. Do I have another speaker for the motion? Councillor... I'm very happy to support it, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, if you look at the contribution this organisation makes to this community in many ways, the amount of uh, money that we're foregoing here will well and truly be paid back to the ratepayers of this region and beyond. Uh, and I'm, I'm very comfortable to support it and I just hope the motion goes through. Mm -hmm. Any speakers against 100%? Okay, with that, Councillor. Add to that, uh, there will be a state government hospital built here. And I, or whilst I don't know the exact rules, but in keeping with what happens when they build schools, I'd imagine there'd be no infrastructure charges coming our way as a result of that state government hospital mm. coming to the, mm. the ratepayers. Those infrastructure charges would very clearly uh, be coming out of, uh, or the use of that infrastructure would be very, coming very much, very clearly coming out of the ratepayers' uh, pockets. With that, I put the motion that um, there is a 100% waiver and a deferral until such time as the use changes. All those in favour? Seven. The motion's carried. Thank you, Chris. Uh, now, something a little bit easier, hopefully. Um, item number six, which is the Regional Development Applications Report. And I'll get Mr CEO... Uh, the GM to speak. No, just humble general manager. Um, yes, look, very quickly, I'll be quick on this one. Um, basically, housing um, in um, July is 54 houses compared to June of 47 houses, uh, approvals, house approvals. With units, um, it's a bit better. Uh, uh, again, it's a good figure, actually. 19 units compared to nine in June. 
Uh, and that's graph number six for anyone interested. Graph number four um, in, is interesting in uh, that we had in June uh, 45 lots approved um, compared to two lots approved in July. Uh, and the seals 57 in June and uh, only three in July. Interestingly, uh, I had a little sneak preview of August figures uh, based on the fact that the July figures were so low um, and uh, we've actually got seals, we've sealed 119 lots um, in August so there's going to be uh, in our net next statistical um, report a fair jump in, in sealing which is that jump we've been waiting for as a result of the federal government um, initiatives in housing and the building industry. Um, interesting, uh, though, the, is the building investment, um, the, the, the general uh, value of building approvals across the region. In June, it was 37.2 million. In July, it uh, is 61.2 million. So it, it's a fair jump. But uh, again, having a quick sneak preview of August, we're back to 30.8 million. Um, so I think maybe uh, the July figure is, uh, has taken into account a couple of large commercial developments that are going on around the region. Look, I might leave it there, councillors, uh, in the considering time. And uh, any questions on the stats? Summerfield, did you? Just, just really quickly, thank you, Madam Chair. Just uh, number nine, Stuart, it's good to see those temporary incentive policy applications in there. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thank you for that. Yep. Mm. Any other questions, councillors? Um, I just wondered, Stuart, about um, the... Actually, don't worry, sorry. <laughs> no, I answered my. I answered that question this morning in our meeting. So thank you. Um, okay. So the recommendation is that we um, accept the report. Can I have a mover for that, Councillor Carl, Councillor Antonio? All those in favour? It's carried. Thank you. Um, now, what do we want to do? We want to have a break. We before... adjourn the meeting till. Ah uh, yes. Can I have someone move that we adjourn the meeting, Councillor O'Shea, Councillor Shine? All those in favour? Thank you. But before we go to the water and waste, do we want to have a break? break? A little break, by the sounds of it? Yes, OK. We'll have 10 minutes. So we'll come back at 10 past 11. Good. 11.
Good. Okay, everybody, we're back, back and live. <coughs> Welcome to the Water and Waste Committee meeting of Toowoomba Regional Council for September 2020. This meeting is open to the public and is being live streamed. Good morning, still good morning, just to everybody watching. I would like to thank those of you who are in the room. I acknowledge Mayor Antonio, Deputy Mayor MacDonald, Portfolio Leader Councillor Summerfield, um, General Manager Platts, councillors, council officers, and CEO Brian Pigeon. I uh, open this meeting and I will begin by acknowledging the Aboriginal party parties whose song lines traverse these lands we meet on today, the Western Waka Waka, Gaibal and Jarawa peoples, and pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging. For they hold the knowledge, rich traditions and bold ambitions of Australia's first peoples. We have no uh, apologies or leave of absence and we move on to item number three which is the thermal waste treatment trial and I'll hand over to the manager of waste services Matt Tor. Thank you Matt. Thank you Madam Chair. Good morning councillors. The report before you today recommends the approval of a short-term trial with local company Pyrocal for thermal treatment of waste products. As a background, the Queensland Waste Management and Resource Recovery Strategy provides direction for waste businesses to reduce the amount of waste disposed in landfill, including considering uh, energy from waste solutions for materials that cannot otherwise be reused or recycled. The waste levy provides further financial incentive for, in, for investigation of alternatives to landfill. Pyrocal has developed a technology that can thermally treat various wastes, resulting in the production of energy and a char byproduct. Pyrocal has approvals to undertake a trial of this technology at a site in the Wellcamp Industrial Estate. Under the trial, Council would provide waste products as required to undertake the trial, including general waste, green waste and timber. And at the conclusion of the trial, Council will receive information on the inputs and outputs of the process, including energy, emissions and byproducts produced. It's important to note that this is a trial and as such, Council uh, will have no ongoing relationship with Pyrocal following the completion of the trial. Should Council wish to proceed with any ongoing treatment solutions following the trial, we would be required to undertake a full procurement process. This trial is consistent with Council's waste strategy and closely aligned with the future waste management strategy currently under development. Overall, it's a great opportunity for Council to work with a local company to assess the commercial, logistical and technical viability of thermal waste treatment opportunities for Toowoomba Regional Council and is recommended for the committee endorsement. Thank you, Matt. I've got a question from uh, Councillor Summerfield. Uh, not so much a question, Madam Chair, but um, I'd just like to say I'm really excited about this trial. I think it's um, a great opportunity for us uh, moving forward. I was really disappointed that um, the uh, trial didn't go ahead with our uh, solids out at Watala. Um, so this is really good that this is actually happening now. And Councillor Melissa, Councillor Rebecca and I did a tour of Paracal the other day and um, they're doing great things out there. So I'm looking forward to hearing the results of the trial as it goes forward if, it, if it's all approved today. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor O'Hara Sullivan, please. Thanks, Madam Chair. Matt, um, is the sort of the um, essence of this project, is it Things are being burnt, is that correct? The waste is being burnt? That is correct, yes. Yeah. So does this, um, the, um, the facility already exists, is that correct? No, so currently um, Pyrocal have a, a small scale demonstration plant and they do have some plants operating in different locations around, around the country. Um, this is a larger scale uh, facility that they have a, an approval to do a trial. Um, so they have uh, an environmental authority uh, with the Department of Environment and Science and also have uh, approval through Council's Development Services for a temporary, um, temporary use of a site at the Wellcamp Industrial Estate to do, to do a trial over a 60 day period. So it would be infrastructure put in place to do that trial and then the infrastructure would be removed. Could I have a follow up, Matt? Please. Um, Matt, can you just explain to me what happens with the... Um, emissions that come off, how is that treated? So um, that is largely part of this trial as well, to look at what does happen with emissions. Um, the process is designed such that uh, the temperatures and the way that oxygen is introduced into the process that emissions are controlled. Um, the state has uh, an energy from waste policy, which includes some strict controls and guidelines around what emissions are um, 
uh, permitted under that uh, policy. So this trial essentially is an opportunity to determine whether this process can comply with the emissions requirements. Um, so as, as uh, Councillor Summerfield mentioned, uh, we, we had looked at doing a similar trial with Pyrocal to do with biosolids. That did not go ahead for, for a number of reasons, but they've recently undertaken a similar trial in Logan with biosolids, and part of that process was looking at the emissions. So, um, so essentially emissions are very strictly controlled. There's a European standard that is required, um, and this trial will show what emissions, if any, are released. Excellent, thank you. Just one more quick one. Please. What type of um, waste is burnt? So under this trial, the uh, Pyrocal, their environmental authority, allows uh, treatment of municipal solid waste, which is general waste uh, from uh, red, red top bins, uh, tyres, green waste and timber. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Carl. Uh, Madam Chair, I was um, just happy to move if there's no more questions. Um, I think it's a great initiative um, and my limited understanding of the process around emissions and how uh, oxygen is reduced in that burn and how that's controlled and the char that comes from that carbon-based product that can be used for all sorts of things, uh, other uses as a, as a byproduct from this process. Um, I think it's a, a, a critical trial we need to do and be able to crunch the numbers, look at it and see how that might be appropriate or not for us in the future as part of our solution to managing our total waste cycle um, in the region. And, you know, we probably, well, not probably, we have to think beyond the border fences now about how... Uh, waste, because that doesn't matter where we live, we're all generators of waste, and how we treat that in the future is critical. And this is one small step to actually looking at another part of the, a solution. Thanks. I'm happy to move that if there's no... There's, there's just a couple more questions, I believe, Councillor Carl. Councillor MacDonald, please. Thanks very much, Madam Chair. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. Uh, look, this is, <coughs> this is uh, music to my ears to have this, this trial, and, and uh, I'm sure when after the trial's done, we can assess it and see the pros and cons and how it could perhaps go forward as a tender if that is the way it goes down the path. In regard to the 100 ton, is it 100 ton, the initial trial? Um, Something of that order. Mm -hmm. yeah, that nature. Yes, that's mm -hmm. The transportation of that to the site, is that council's responsibility or how, how, what sort of negotiation is there? So we, we're currently un undergoing a negotiation on the exact agreements. Um, in uh, effectively, however, transportation uh, of our product to the site would be of uh, negligible charge. Um, for example, we, if, if we were to direct JJ Richards to take waste to the Wellcamp Industrial Estate as opposed to Bedford Street, there's no, there's no difference there in terms of what we would be charged. Um, similarly, with our timber and green waste, we currently pay a contractor to take that off-site. Um, we could pay them, you know, the same same amount, or it would be a, a negligible difference to take that. Um, so, from a council perspective, there's no cost impact. Just one quick follow-up. Please. You mentioned biosolids before, Matt, through you, Madam Chair, and and suggested that as a, as a result of the Logan test that they've done, or done some work there, that that it may be something worth looking at. So. That conversation is still continuing on? That's correct. I spoke to Pyrocal about that again last week and they are going to talk to the Department of Environment and Science to, to see whether that can be included in the Environmental Authority for this trial. Um, the reason it wasn't included is because DES um, had seen that they'd done a similar trial in Logan. However, the difference is that our, our biosolids um, are uh, digested, whereas the treatment of the biosolids down in, in Logan, they used undigested biosolids. So we'd be looking at a different, it's a different product. Um, so potentially you could put a case to DES to, to say, can we please include this? Um, because it is, a di it is different. The reason it was left out is because DES thought we'd already, that Pyrocal had already done a similar trial, but that wasn't quite correct. Thanks, Madam Chair. If there's no further questions, I just have one final one, if I might, Matt. Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Summerfield. If I could thank I you. I did do a scan. Let's follow up with um, Councillor Jeb. Um, 
everyone would be interested to know that Logan's actually now built their own plant and I think it's now commissioned. So it's mm. pretty exciting times for them moving forward. Mm. Um, Matt, page five of the report, we just talk about the disposal of waste char generated by the process. And my understanding is that at, in other areas that that char can be used and there is a carbon use. Mm -hmm. What are our plans with that char? Mm. Uh, in terms of this trial, uh, mm. the, the agreement that we would look to enter into is that uh, if Pyrocal cannot find another use for that char, that we would simply put it into landfill. Um, in this instance, there is work going on with USQ to look at what alternatives there are for the char in terms of agriculture or other, op um, other opportunities mm. for that char. In this instance, though, we would simply um, landfill the material because we have no use for it at this stage. Um, again, the cost to that is, is less than the cost of, would be of um, landfilling the unprocessed material because the char is, is around 25% of the mass of the original product. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I think then we have a mover from uh, Councillor Carl. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Taylor. All in favour? Carried without dissent. Thank you very much, Matt. And with that... We can adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much. The time is um, Wendy 11.27. Oh, sorry, a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Councillor O'Shea. Thank you, Mayor Antonio. All in favour? Thank you. Good morning, uh, everyone. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional parties whose song lines traverse the lands we meet on today, the Western Waka Waka, the Gaibal, the Jadawa and the Bigamal peoples who come from out in the western part of our area and pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging for they hold the knowledge, rich traditions and bold ambitions of Australia's first people. Uh, welcome to the tr Infrastructure Committee meeting of Toowoomba Regional Council. I'd like to recognise our portfolio leader, Councillor Melissa Taylor, and I welcome the Mayor, uh, Deputy Mayor, Councillors, um, GMs, staff teams, uh, and particularly Mike Brady and uh, Rodney Betts, who will be uh, delivering these, um, these reports. And I'd like to welcome everybody who's looking at us on live streaming and welcome you to spring. And hopefully there'll be some rain around the, around the ridges soon. Um, our first, um, we have no apologies, so everyone's in attendance. And our first item is uh, Regional and Active Public Transport Committee um, and the appointment of the community members. We're a little bit further down the process than we were in the last one we discussed. And I'd now like to hand over to, firstly, our General Manager, Mike Brady, and uh, I don't know whether Hyde is not with us today, is he? No, so, and Rodney Betts will assist. Thank you. Uh, good morning, councillors. Good morning, Mike. Uh, councillors, first report today, uh, the Regional Active and Public Transport Advisory Committee appointment of community members. Um, this report, obviously, um, or committee, I should say, got uh, council approval to go forward with uh, in June. Um, it's been running for the last two terms of council and um, has run for quite successfully through that period. Uh, we were um, very fortunate to get a total of 14 nominations uh, received uh, as per attachment three, um, which was good to see. And I've advised council this morning of three very late um, mm -hmm. nominations um, in an email uh, that only came in on between Friday and Monday. Uh, that said, councillors, um, uh, through uh, the ISG uh, committee councillors, 
Uh, we did have a look at those three, but uh, believe that they, their, their matters are well represented by um, the suggested uh, recommendation um, in the report, um, and hence would uh, dis, uh, continue to disregard them. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, the first meeting of these advisory committees always review the terms of reference, so if there's any minor changes, that then comes back as a separate report, separate future report to Council. Um, what we've done with the nominations councillor, councillors um, is you'll note that we've focused uh, in the eight community members and then um, with two departmental um, members out of uh, Department of Transport and Main Roads and TransLink to also um, be advisors on our committee. Uh, with that, councillors, I'm happy to just have the Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mr Brady, I'd actually like to take this opportunity to thank uh, if the previous um, RAPTAC committee under the, the uh, guidance of yourself and Rod and Mr Betts, and I'd like to thank everyone who served on that and um, we actually had in council, if we can share that with you, we have Councillor MacDonald is privy to that, but th what we achieved over that time was quite, and Councillor James, of course, sorry, Councillor James, and what we achieved over that time, sometimes we sit there and think we're not getting anywhere, but when you, when you reflect back over what has happened during that four-year term, um, I'd like to thank everyone who was part of that committee and... Um, as we look forward to the new to the new committee. So over to you, councillors. Um, Councillor Vonhoff. Thanks, Madam Chair. I actually have some questions regarding um, the attachments three and four, which are both in confidential. And so we, I suppose, to discuss that, we would need to cut the live stream or ah, move into... Yes, we'd need to go into confidential. Um, well, perhaps we should, uh, with indulgence, move on to the next... Uh, item and leave that as the beginning of, but we'd need, uh, what, what should we do there, Mr CEO? So you wanted to the actually, applications. you wanted to actually talk about the actual applications and details about the personal. Attach, attachment three and then attachment four, the EOI and then also the uh, multi-criteria assessment. I can't think of a way to do it without being, no. being specific yeah, well, if that's the case, We're if you want to discuss those, you should, you should, you can either go into confidential now and in and out quickly if you wish to do that and continue on. Um, um, probably just as quick as anything. Probably just as quick because we will be doing the confidentials <coughs> afterwards anyway. So, can I have a mover to go? Madam Chair. Counts, um, Mr. Mayor, seconder, Councillor Summerfield. Those in favour? It's carried. Brendan, thank you. Um, so, over to you, Councillor Von Hoff. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh,
Councillor Macdonald, those in favour? It's carried, thank you. So we move, we, we're back on item three. Um, Just wait for this. Right. Sorry, we're right? Yep. Councillor Bonhoff, you wanted to move a, a, an addition there? Sure, so um, the inclusion of um, person I in that public transport advisory committee so that the council would appoint the following nine, not eight, mm. community members in the um, part one, and everything else stays the same. Thank you, Councillor Von Hoff. Seconder? Councillor MacDonald? Uh, no comment, no more comment on that? Those in favour? It's carried, thank you. Thank you, Councillors. Thank you, Councillors. So now we move on to item four, which is the Toowoomba City Aerodrome Advisory Committee. Um, and I think, um, Mr Brady, you're going to present that? Madam Chair, I've got a declaration to make yes, on, in this matter. Yes, Mr I have a, a declaration of conflict of interest pursuant to section 175E of the Local Government Act 2009. I would like to inform the meeting that I have a personal interest in this matter, which I recognize, recognize may be a real or perceived conflict of interest, the particulars of which are as follows. The nature of the interest is one of the five community members recommended for appointment is married to a relative. Matt Handley is married to my third cousin with whom I have a personal relationship. I have determined that this personal interest is not of sufficient significance that it will lead me to making a decision on this matter that is contrary to the public interest. I will best perform my responsibility of serving the overall public interest of the whole of the council's area by participating in the discussion and voting on this matter. However, I acknowledge that the remaining councillors must now determine pursuant to sections 175E4 of the Local Government Act 2009A whether I have a real conflict of interest in this matter or a perceived conflict of interest in this matter and B if so whether one I must leave the matter while this meeting pardon while this matter is discussed or voted on or two I may participate in the meeting in relation to the matter including by voting on the matter thank you councillor von hoff councillors Mr. CEO, should we um, should councillors vote on that? Or? I think it, I think it's a long bow to draw, really. So I don't know where we sit on this. Um. Any questions? Yeah, can, any questions for councillor? Questions Bonhoff? for councillor von Hoff. Otherwise, I can trot out. You can vote, and I'll trot back. Yes, in. yes. I think it's possibly the best way. Yeah. Thank you, councillor von Hoff. Councillors. Councillor McDonald. Councillor Bonhoff stays in the room. Thank you. Councillor and the Mayor seconds. Those in favour? Reason. Reason is uh, yep. too far removed. Mm. This is an advisory. That's an advisory committee. An advisory group for council with no uh, no decision making powers. No. no. Mm. Thank you, Councillor McDonald. Thank you, councillors. And whilst we're on that subject, I'd just like also to thank the previous uh, aerodrome. Advisory Committee, chaired by Councillor James. Thank you, everyone who was on that. Um, we have to vote on this issue. Yes. Oh, no, we did vote. Yes. It was a mover and seconded on this issue, and yeah, we did vote. Mm. All in favour of. After Councillor Von Hoff came back in. Yep. 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 Moved by Councillor McDonald, second by. Councillor okay. No, no. No, she didn't come. Well, Councillor Vonhoff to come no, back in. To come back in. We moved yes. and seconded. And we voted. Moved and seconded, surely. Yeah, <coughs> I, I don't yeah we, we voted on that. Yeah, we, we did. Is that language. what you're talking about? No, we haven't voted on the DAC TAC yet. Yeah. No, yeah. no. No, thank you. Um, now we move into the agenda item. Uh, item four, the Toowoomba City Aerodrome Advisory Committee. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, just, just elevated your mic. Thank you, Mr Brady. I'll say as a mere GM. <laughs> uh, councillors, um, thank you again. Uh, this this uh, advisory committee, again, been going for the last couple of <coughs> councillors uh, within um, here. We didn't get, uh, again, we offered to um, out to the public realm to uh, uh, get interest. Um, we only got five community members uh, putting their hand up to be part of the committee at this point in time. Um, from time to time through the life of committees, when they are short like this, occasionally there may be 
uh, opportunity for mm. um, future um, persons to, to express interest uh, to become uh, involved. That's, uh, that's happened in the past. That may again happen in the future. But I think it's a fairly straightforward one. Um, there's uh, four of those uh, councillors, um, members uh, operate and have businesses out in, in the um, airport, uh, to the uh, airdrome committee. Um, th there is a good community uh, representative that's put his name forward, mm. um, which was quite uh, interesting, uh, his background, and uh, Keith McKenzie with the broad aviation, aviation safety and community interests. So I put those uh, as recommended in the report, councillors, those five people. Councillors? Just a bit of move, Madam Chair. Just a, just a man, comment. Mr Madam Chair, oh, well then, well, it's not even a question, it's a comment. Just written regard to the terms of reference, I think that's a good move to, to broaden that. Yeah. For, um, it's worth... Oh, yes. sorry. Oh, sorry, councillors, yes, we missed um, mentioning that. Yeah. Mention that? Yes. Because that, that is a significant yes. change of what this group has done in the past. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we've at, we've you know this Pittsworth Milmerin area and the and aerodromes and the um, crow's nest the helicopter ba uh, pad out at a crow's nest, yeah, yeah, so no, that's that, added um, into here. Yeah, that was quite remiss of me, sorry, councillors. To that is a change. Uh, to overlook yes. that uh, element. Yes, so we're moving to the Toowoomba Thank suggestion you. to the Toowoomba Thanks, region. City Airdrome um, or Toowoomba Region Airdrome Advisory Committee, yes. which would then um, take into account, uh, as Councillor Macdonald mentioned, mm. uh, Milmer and Pittsworth and Crow's Nest Helipad. Um, mm. I think with the interest and in the use of our regional um, airports um, and its mainly emergency services in at uh, Crow's Nest, uh, it sort of makes uh, makes sense. And there may also be, as I mentioned, the, the size committee, the opportunity to add to it. Mm. Add to maybe there is somebody in the mm. um, regional areas that may have interest in the future that may um, be of, of value to join the committee. Thank you. So it's moved, Mr. Mayor. Oh, did you have a question? Councilor? Yes, if I could, uh, uh, Chair. Um, I note that. Uh, well, all of these people are in Toowoomba, none in the regions at the moment, which is the mm. point that you were just making, I think, in terms of wanting to, uh, or hoping that in the future there would be yes. wider interest. Uh, but my question is, uh, relates to their function as to whether or not it's, um, uh, do they deal with issues from uh, members of the community around the, for example, the Toowoomba Aerodrome, uh, who might be upset about noise and things of that nature. I know that was, in my former life, that was an issue raised by many people in that Wilsonton area, Newtown area over the years. Yeah. Is that part of their function to, mm -hmm. to consider those sort of uh, complaints or, or not? Uh, when it comes to those sort of complaints, they, they uh, dealt with just um, through, through the group, through our normal, like any other complaints. So the committee there, there is a... Um, an opportunity for us to raise issues that come out of the community realm um, where there is a sense of, um, uh, you know, people, or the users of the airdrome um, probably not um, being considerate. Um, if, if that does occur, we do raise those issues from time to time, but the formal uh, consideration of uh, any issues of noise or complaints is handled through our uh, normal processes within council. But you, but you might, sit, if I may, Chair, you might seek advice from this committee as to uh, what their view of the of that type of complaint might be. Yeah, um, we've got a fairly strict. Um, the morning seems to be the main issue when it comes to noise. You know, the early morning planes and. We strongly encourage that the um, business owners and users of the airport, um, you know, are considerate of that um, in the morning, and um, particularly uh, without with the time that's allotted, and not sort of take off 15 minutes early or half an hour early or those sorts of things, but to be uh, fair and reasonable in that regard. 
And as well as that, I mean, the flying doctors have no curfew and neither does life flight, so... Great. Yeah. Um, so move, Mr Mayor. <laughs> Seconded. Have a second. Councillor Summerfield. Uh, those in favour? It's carried. Thank you, councillors. So we move on to item five, which is um, the endorsement of the priority route maps from the Downs and South West Principal Cycle Network Plan. And that's, this is the maps of the Department of Transport and Main Roads. Yeah, thank you, councillors. Um, our work with uh, TMUG uh, on Principal Cycle Network goes back um, quite a number of years. Um, they get uh, a major review about every five years, but every two years they go through our interim review just to make sure things are still on track. Um, Tim, I've just asked for formalisation of our support to the latest version, which is um, basically uh, little or no change from what was uh, has been previously uh, approved by uh, or supported by council and uh, TMR. So it's a fairly straightforward report from that perspective. Uh, and there was a, uh, what seemed to be a mapping error, which uh, we picked up, and that'd be our only, uh, as noted in recommendation two, um, for that to just be highlighted back to TMR. So over to you, councillors. Thank you. Councillors? Councillor Von Hoft? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mike. I've been um, approached by um, a constituent previously, and I'm pleased to see, which I just wanted to clarify my reading of this, please, Mike, that um, the cycleway that's at Hodgson Vale, it's a priority A for it to continue up through top, top camp and link in with the rest of Toowoomba, thereby you know, we can see a point in the future where people, cyclists, will be able to go from the southern end from Hodgson Vale all the way through to Highfields. <coughs> yeah, it's a very the lines skinny are... road there. Yeah, New England Highway. Um, I'm just going to. It's on. If it's helpful, um, Mike, it's on page ten of the um, attachment. The, the department. The heading on it is Toowoomba Regional Council, Toowoomba South. Um, just, yeah, the priority A is, yeah, uh, yeah, so if it's in that green, mm. as noted there, that's correct, uh, what you're saying. Um, just note that they, um, the actual route of a cycleway, um, the intent is to go along that route, um, but there can be a level of... Uh, physical constraints and different other elements um, in the, in the uh, road network that sometimes may see um, workarounds uh, along any route. So in, in essence, what it shows is correct um, and that's the, the intent of uh, what these lines show on the plans. But the New England Highway there is very, very narrow. Mm. The, the other thing to keep in mind is the um, steepness of the grades mm -hmm. as well. And when it comes to uh, cycleways, um, it's something that is actually um, uh, seriously considered. Um, so as much as we think it's a straight line, uh, sometimes when it comes with the grades that we're, when it comes to designing these cycleways, they've got to take the grades into account, and so they've got to find a route that will enable a reasonable grade. Um, to be uh, traversed by cyclists. So, so you will get from time to time uh, a meandering cycleway um, being formed. And if you've seen any of those around the different cities, uh, that occasionally has to be in the way things are constructed. Thank you, um, Mike. I think meandering is still appreciated. Um, <laughs> um, a supplementary, if I might, Madam Chair, which is just, do we have, and apologies if I've missed it in the report, are there any time frames attached to those priorities? Um, it, it's really a base based on um, future funding. Um, from Council's perspective, the, the funding that we put in at a budget level 
it, it really just indicates where we'll invest first rather than when we'll invest. And also, um, not only the funding that we get from council, but we do make application every year for some funding from the state government. And again, that's a, they've got a certain bucket of money. Uh, it's not a huge, um, and that's spread across the whole of the state. So um, yeah, we work with them closely on the next, uh, the next priority. Thank you. Um, groups such as our advisory group, RAPTAC, um, they get the opportunity to have a look at and feed into these sorts of plans, and they have in the past. And and it's interesting because the high, the Highfields cycleway was a bit of a pipe dream, and I know that um, it was put into the Q trip, and lo and behold, some of it's happening. I know that's 12, 14 years ago, but it's it's happening, which is really good. And people seem to think it's council. It's not. It's TMR that's building that cycleway. We're building it on their behalf. But that'll be great to see little things happen, and it's it's good to see. Thank you. Any other questions? Sorry, Councillor yeah. Macdonald. Madam Chair, it's, um, these are always good to, to see from mm. a picture of where they can where they can go. Just in regard to the priorities, there is a, unless it's changed, but it's on the on page three of that document actually list the priorities time frame so a being next 10 years b 10 yeah. to 15 c yeah. 15 mm -hmm. to 20 d 20 years or more so there are some you know, extended time frames with them and and i guess that got me thinking about the area of westbrook and heading across into the western corridor if you like or the Twimmer trade gateway and uh, i know that the the next review the next large review is 2021 I just wonder whether those priorities might be something we look at as a council, given the uh, the development that's happened since the first first route was done, and what it might look like in the next few years. So that's really just a comment more than anything. Mm. Um, in regard to that, we get a good crack at this next year. You know, mm. first review. And, and you know, if you're looking at Top Camp, then the road is just too narrow there to put anything yeah. through, and and noth nothing would happen there until the road was changed. But you make a really good point, and it's such a pity that the railway corridor was sold off in many of those areas. There would have been an amazing cycleway, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's just in regard to Highfields, it's interesting. Well, we've got the, the uh, former member here that had advocated for that at that, yeah. that same time, being a cyclist. So it is interesting how things take and time. I told him about it. You know? yeah. and we just have to bear that in mind. But, um, you know, the growth in those areas, I see that as... That Certain mm. opportunity. That's all. Just yeah, thank you very much, Councillor Macdonald. It is good to see that happening. Well, Council um, does have over over time uh, with each review the opportunity to upgrade the priority of a of a route. So um, the op, you know, if that's deemed net, um, something you'd like to do at some point, obviously that can happen. Any other comments, councillors? Councillor Macdonald moves. Seconded, Councillor Melissa Taylor. Uh, those in favour? It's carried. Thank you. I think we move into close now, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to get back. Thank you. Um, councillors, um, we need to move into a closed session. Can I have a mover for close? Councillor MacDonald. Uh, Councillor Summerfield. Council moved Councillor Summerfield, sorry. Seconded Councillor MacDonald. Those in favour? It's carried. Thank you.
Van Hoff, Councillor O'Shea. Councillor O'Shea. Councillor Van Hoff, Councillor O'Shea. Thank you. So one at a time. One at a time. Um, Councillor Carl. Um, Madam Chair, I'd like to declare to the meeting that I may have, it may be considered that I have a personal interest or a perceived personal interest in this matter. And sorry, Wendy. And, and just it, we are now looking um, at item seven, which is uh, Central Highfields Trunk Stormwater Drainage for Highfields Road. Pursuant to section 175E of the Local Government Act 2009, I would like to inform the meeting that I have a personal interest in the matter, which I recognise may, may be real or perceived conflict of interest. The particulars are as follows, that I am a resident um, adjacent to the central area of Highfields um, and just for appropriateness, I'd rather the councillors determine whether they feel that I can vote impartially on the matter or not. Sorry. Thank you, Councillor Carl. Any questions for Councillor Carl? Thank you. Over to you, councillors. Councillor MacDonald. Madam Chair, look, um, given um, that um, Councillor Carl will have no greater or less interest than any one else living in the in the uh, proximity of the Highfields area where this infrastructure is being constructed, uh, I move that. Uh, so that's the reason I move that Councillor Carl can uh, remain in the room and vote on the matter. Thank you, Councillor. Who was first? <laughs> Councillor Vonhoff. Yep, second. Seconded. Councillors, those in favour, or those who agree? Thank you. We get Councillor Carl back. Councillor Tim. Thank you, Madam Chair. I wish to declare a real or perceived conflict uh, in the fact that we are talking about the Central Highfields area and my own brother lives in an area directly adjacent to this. Um, viewed in light of the decision made by Councillor Carl that he doesn't have a conflict of interest, I would propose to the council that I similarly do not have anything to gain or do not have a conflict of interest and therefore should stay in the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, councillors agree? Yep. Okay, thank you. Now we move into a closed session again. Thank you. Mover? No, no sorry, we have to test the room. So. Hmm? I think he's just saying that I, I, I don't think that's what Councillor Tim said. He didn't ask to check the He room. didn't ask that. He just said that seeing Councillor Carl okay. has, um, it, he feels... He doesn't need to mention it then. No. All right, Councillor Tim, uh, it's um, possibly if that the case, you needn't to mention it and maybe we need to test the room just for uh, conclusiveness. Councillors test the room. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors? Councillor MacDonald? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I move that Councillor McMahon uh, remains in the room and uh, allowed to vote on this matter, reason being that his interest is far more removed <coughs> than any other interest, uh, greater or lesser. Nothing to gain or lose. Than uh, anyone living in that area. Thank you. Seconder? Councillor Von Hoff, those in favour? It's carried, thank you. Councillor Tim. Can we move into a closed session, please? Mover, Councillor MacDonald, seconded, Councillor Summerfield, those in favour? Hold on, it's just hold on, please. Just let Wendy catch up. I'm sorry. Right. Just wait for, we're, we're in closed session, Brendan, thanks.
So our first um, uh, item seven, isn't it? Do the declarations again? You do, you do. They don't need to make that declaration again. That was made in open session, wasn't it? Yeah, no, you don't need to do that again. So the uh, recommendation. Moved. moved Councillor MacDonald, seconded. Councillor Melissa Taylor, those in favour? It's carried, thank you. Uh, item eight, we moved down to item eight. Moved Councillor MacDonald, seconded the Mayor. Happy with that wording there? Um, and make an information session, I think. Um, thank you. Around the, yeah, thank you. Around um, opportunities and available. Thank you. Happy with that wording, Councillor MacDonald and the Mayor? No, no, no. Sorry? Voting. Councillor Summerfield asked, do we need a timeline? You can have it before the end of the year, November. Yeah. Okay. Happy with that? Yeah, that's before the end of the year? Oh, this, this calendar year. This calendar year. Yeah, that's what we meant. Yeah. Um, we wear a capacity to do these things. There's a lot of things happening. Um, no other comment? Those in favour? It's carried. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can thank you, councillors. That completes the... And thank you, Mr Brady and Rodney. That completes the Infrastructure Committee meeting for September. Thank you. Oh, do you want to have a break for lunch? Or it's, ten it's quarter to one. I think we might need to adjourn for lunch. Thank you. Thanks, Brendan. I'll reschedule that information. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Is he watching me? No, because it's it's adjourned. It's it's yeah, yeah, completed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wendy, thank you. For the water, for the water and wine. Yeah, yeah. we'll come back after Planning. after lunch.
Thank you, and um, uh, to the, welcome to the afternoon session. Um, I'd like to uh, resume the meeting. Can I have someone move that we resume the meeting? Councillor Melissa Taylor and um, Mr Mayor. Uh, all those in favour? Thank you. And um, with that, I need someone um, move that we go into confidential. Councillor Vonhoff, Councillor Taylor, all those in favour? Thank you. Karen? Uh, so
Hi, Brendan. Thank you. Um, so um, we resume at item number eight, um, the Confidential Development Services Planning and Environment Court Appeals and Compensation Claims for August 2020. Can I have someone move that we accept that report? Uh, Councillor Carl and Councillor Vonhoff, all those in favour? It's carried. Um, item number nine, which is the um, Regional Enforcement Actions, August 2020. Madam Chair, I'll have to yes. declare... Uh, Councillor McDonald. In this, thank you, Madam Chair. Pursuant to Section 175A of the Local Government Act 2009, I would like to inform the meeting that I have a personal interest in this matter, which I recognise may be a real or perceived conflict of interest, particulars of which are as follows. The nature of the interest is I'm a resident in the same street as the subject property referred to in item one of the schedule of matters in progress in the Planning and Environment Court and or in the Magistrates Court Enforcement Actions. I'll be dealing with this declared conflict of interest by leaving the meeting while the matter is discussed and voted on. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor O'Shea. Thanks, Madam Chair. Declaration of conflict of interest pursuant to section 175E of the Local Government Act 2009. I wish to inform the meeting that I have a personal interest in this matter, which I recognise may be a real or perceived conflict of interest, the particulars of which are as follows. The nature of the interest is myself and my spouse engaged a builder to work on a property owned by us. The builder has then engaged the company referred to in item one of the schedule of matters in progress in the planning and environment court and or in the Magistrates Court Enforcement Actions. I will be dealing with this declared conflict of interest by leaving the matter while it is discussed and voted on. Thank you. Okay, councillors, can I have someone move recommendation number one regarding item one in the schedule? Councillor McMahon, Councillor Summerfield, all those in favour? It's carried. And with that, could I have someone move recommendation number two, which is the balance of the items in the schedule? <coughs> uh, Councillor Carl and Councillor Vonhoff, all those in favour? It's carried. And that is the conclusion of the Planning and Development Committee for September. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, councillors, um, we return to the uh, Water and Waste Committee meeting for September 2020. Do I have a mover to go into confidential? Councillor Summerfield, do I have a seconder? Councillor McMahon, all in favour? Carried.
and it's important. She declared that in closed session. Right? Mm, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, should, yeah, should she, she come back in? Up. Could someone get Councillor Rebecca, please? I thought, yeah, she, she did. I'll stand back and she can Oh, Councillor Tim. Councillor Tim. Yeah, that's on right Councillor Tim, second. On right to declare. Declare your declaration again. Oh, mercy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, item number five, declaration of conflict of interest. Pursuant to section 175E of the Local Government Act 2009, I would like to inform the meeting that I have a personal interest in this matter, which I recognise may be a real or perceived conflict of interest, the particulars of which are as follows. The nature of the interest is my parents live at Mount Kynock, their address is unlisted, but their property is outside the expansion area, buffer plan, easement route and acquisition area. I have determined that this personal interest is not of sufficient significance that it will lead me to making a decision on this matter that is contrary to the public interest. I will best perform my responsibility of serving the overall public interest of the whole of the Council's area by participating in the discussion and voting on this matter. However, I acknowledge that the remaining councillors must now determine, pursuant to section 175E4 of the Local Government Act 2009, A, whether I have a real conflict of interest in this matter or a perceived conf conflict of interest in this matter, and B, if so, whether one, I must leave the meeting while this matter is discussed or voted on, or two, I may participate in the meeting in relation to the matter, including by voting on the matter. So I head off again. So does anyone have any questions for Councillor Rebecca before she leaves? Okay, does anybody want to have a discussion on the matter? No? So would someone like to move that, uh, Councillor Megan? That Madam Chair, um, I'd like to move that um, Councillor Von Hoff does not have a conflict of interest. In Sorry? I, I'd like to move that she does not have a conflict of interest in this instance. And can remain in the room. Thank you. I think the, and uh, the reason being that I think it's um, the her parents um, being outside the subject area is, um, the link is tenuous. You comfortable with that, Val? Okay. So could I get a seconder for that, please? Uh, Mr Mayor, those in favour? Excellent. Uh, Councillor Rebecca can come back in. Uh, thank you, councillors. So, um, I restate all my acknowledgements from earlier in the morning and we have Ray here to, to speak on the report. I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, councillor. Oh, uh, oh, wait. Sorry. To close the meeting again. Can I have a mover? Thank you to close the meeting, councillor Taylor, councillor Antonio, all in favour. Thank you.
Brendan, we're live again. Okay, thank you. So the recommendation is there before you, councillors. It's in two parts. Part one, that the CEO be delegated authority to negotiate and finalise the acquisition of the relevant portion of the property generally in accordance with attachment four of the confidential report titled Mount Kynock Water Treatment Plant Upgrade, part two. In the event that council is unsuccessful in relation to recommendation one, that council exercise its powers as constructing authority under the Acquisition of Land Act 1967 to issue a notice of intention to resume to the owner of the properties affected by the land requirement generally in accordance with attachment one and attachment two of the confidential report titled Mount Kynock Water Treatment Plant Upgrade. I mean, you're for, uh, Councillor Summerfield. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Could I just ask um, before, if we reached uh, recommendation two, you would actually come back to us, Brian, as CEO, before you implemented action item two, if we if it came to that. I mean, just to give us an update of what's going on. You're just talking about the resumption compo uh, yes. component. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Happy to move. Thank you, Councillor Summerfield, Councillor Carl. All those in favour? Carried. Councillor Shine, did you want your vote recorded? No, no. Oh, you did. Oh, sorry. Okay. Ah, yes, we are. Okay. Um, in that case, that uh, brings an end to the uh, water and waste meeting for September. Uh, may I move, have a mover to adjourn the meeting? Uh, Councillor O'Hara Sullivan and seconder Councillor uh, Taylor, all in favour? Closing it. That's the end. We're just closing it. Just close it, yeah. To close it. Yep. Same, same, all in favour? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Thanks, Damien.